Okay. So when you're... All right. So this is going to be a little bit of a guide on... Okay, a little bit of a guide. It's a guide on how to make your worker empire in Black Desert. Okay. I'm going to go through each of the nodes. Uh, and especially for the new players. Uh, what, like, if you have a small amount of contribution, what nodes might be better for you? Uh, one thing to be important... Uh, one important thing to note about building a worker empire, guys, is you need to understand what you want. If you're an alchemist, you're going to want different nodes. If you're a cook, you're going to want different nodes. If you just want strict profit, okay, well, that's going to be a different node set up entirely. So we're going to cover, um, generally speaking, what are some of the more profitable nodes uh, in the game? Do I do goblins, giants, or humans? Okay, yeah, let's start off their discussion. All right, there's three different main types of workers in the main region. Giants, humans, and goblins. Goblins work the fastest have the most revolutions, but they carry the least amount, and they run out of beer really quickly. Okay. Um, giants are the slowest working, but they carry the most stuff, and they high, they have a higher chance of, like, they run out of food very much slower, and so you have to feed them less, but also they have more what they call luck. Luck helps you bring in these new things called these sacks. It's like a worker's workman's sack. I'll zoom in. I'll get on that. Where is it? Where are these things? Um... Yeah, these, these sacks. Giants have a really good chance of bringing in these sacks. Okay, more so than goblins. And these sacks are worth a lot of money. You get a lot of stuff from these, like fruits, um, important ores, things like this. Um, lots of fun stuff. Lots of fun stuff. Um, and then there's humans. Humans are kind of middle of the road. They have the most luck technically, but they, they're going to require a medium amount of beer and, and whatnot. Well, not beer, which we will cover. Grilled bird meat. Um... To kind of to, to feed them constantly. Uh, humans get the most sex. And goblins get the least sex. Um, and giants get the most medium sex. But they last if a lot longer. If you wear a turtleneck shirt, you will most which definitely one is look the best? like a roll on deodorant. Very funny. Uh, if Which one is the best is kind of up to you. Um, I will say that there's this new system in the game that allows you to put food into your family inventory. And allow your workers to be fed around the clock automatically. And I would say that when they added that change, they made all three workers, like, roughly equivalent, if I'm being honest. If I'm being honest. I have mainly giants because back in the day, before the continuous feed worker system, I could only feed my workers, like, once or twice a day. And so the giants would kind of work for me. But, like, I would say they're roughly equivalent. Like, you could argue that um, goblins are the best. Or, like, like honestly, if you if you factor in the sacks, you could say that humans are kind of giga-chad, but, like... I don't know. They can, the humans can kind of be a meme sometimes, so it doesn't really matter. As long as you've got artisan workers, it's not going to matter too much. Ookzerk with the six-month reset for T1. Thanks so much, Ookzerk. Welcome back to the squad. And enjoy that six-month sub badge, big man. big man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, okay, so now that we've gone over that, there are different regions of the world that have different workers, but they're essentially just goblins, humans. Can we factor in my sacks? Okay. They're essentially, I don't know what I expected. They're essentially just different versions of goblins and humans and stuff. I will say that the Dokebi workers are extremely valuable in the new region. Um, the new region zone, um, as of this date, which is, you know, August 13, 2023, this is some of the most cost-efficient contribution investment that you can get pound for pound. I like the Dokebi workers in the new zone, mainly because in Dokebi Forest, on this node right here, you can actually only have Dokebi workers working on this node. Okay. Uh, and we'll start with the new zone, just because these are really low contributions. So if you're looking to get into a worker empire, this is the first place you should go. Also, during the main storyline, you'll get a bunch of these Seipyong coins. Uh, forgive me if I butchered the pronunciation on it. But you can turn them in for artisan workers that you can get. You can also roll workers and stuff. So it's really easy to kind of get workers flowing in the new region. So um, I will say that Dokebi Forest is a really, really solid node. Um, why? There we go. Because it gives Trace of Earth, which is like crazy fucking good for alchemy. Any of the traces are a lot of the limiting factors of alchemy. Trace of Ascension, Trace of Earth, Trace of Origin. Uh, trace of Savagery. Well, Trace of Savagery, yeah, Trace of Savagery as well. All of the traces, for the most part, are used in alchemy to great effect, and they are limiting reagents. So, like, they're always going to be really, really valuable. Okay, it's also dropping the Forest Crystal, which is one of the new crystals. 
um which is really really good um this is the uh, this is another note here this is trace of ascension again really good alchemy node high value node right there rough translucent crystal is always sold out on the marketplace because it's used for um polished stone and miraculous and in or miracle imbued stone which is the um the rebuild stuff for node wars and siege people always need that stuff so rough translucent crystal is worth a shitload crystal of harmony helps upgrade your your home crystals which is really good mysterious powder helps make the new match lock and a few other things trace of ascension is a slam dunk these two nodes are really really good uh the dokebi forest you're gonna need two dokebi workers to take that though so just be mindful there uh songachi forest is this is just bracken to be honest with you, Bracken is only used in one recipe in the game, I believe, and it's the Dragonese meal. The Dragonese meal is good, but the fact that it only drops Bracken means that it's kind of a low priority. So, like, if you don't have a crazy amount of contribution, not a priority node. Um, what to do? All right, this is the pig. This is the this is what Golden Pig Cave. Uh, Crystal of Bitterness, Crystal of Darkness. Those are two of the brand new crystals that are worth a shitload of money if you can craft them. But like, honestly, they've dropped in price a lot, so like. It's good to have those on hand, but like they, the, the price will adjust over time. Trace of Savagery is always a slam dunk because alchemy, uh, you need metal solvent. Metal solvent is like the big alchemy um, recipe that Trace of Savagery is used for. Uh, and people need metal solvent for all sorts of things uh, in BDO. Mysterious Powder, as I said before, is pretty much always a slam dunk. It'll probably min out if it hasn't already, but it's really solid. Um, did they release node, uh, node rework for you on PC where energy is saved? No, I don't think so. I still have to take 10 energy to invest remotely. Um, okay. So we have the plateau here and I, okay. So I invested in this. I will probably pull this out. Um, honestly, I don't feel that Reed is particularly that good, uh, of a resource. Let me check it again on the marketplace real quick. Yeah, this is just not it. It's bottomed out at min. It's just not worth a whole lot of money. I really don't... I really don't recommend getting Reed. You could just buy it off the marketplace if you need it for anybody that's trying to go into uh, any of this stuff. Uh, this is more Reed stuff. So, okay, I'm going to have one more extra worker here. We're going to put one of our Dokebi workers on here. Uh, I actually want to use... It's important where you're commanding your workers from. Okay, this is very important. So this is uh, Nampu Village, Nampo Village down here. I have three workers in Nampo Village. Okay, they need jobs. They need jobs. I don't do wild berry, persimmon. No, you don't really need those. I persimmon might count as uh, a. Yeah, no, this is not worthwhile. This is not worth enough for you. Neither is wild berry. Oh, neither is wild berry. To be honest with you, so don't even bother with that node. Um, okay, and run distance is a thing that you need to factor in when you're doing your workers. So when I go to Dokebi Forest, okay, I want to use my workers for Nampo Village because this is going to be their most efficient node. So, okay, so we've got an artisan Dokebi worker here. Okay, uh, trace nodes are always going to have a really long run time no matter what you do. Five hours and 50 minutes, five hours, 51 minutes. Yes, Nampo is six hours and 41 minutes, but... Like, it's going to be long no matter what I do, so I might as well just put it on here because I need to use the Dokebi workers anyway. Um, okay, we went over Golden Pit Gate. Okay, this is a really good fucking node right here. Uh, uh, Bomine County has Bracken, which, again, we talked about that's used in the Dragonese meal. That's like, okay, you know, whatever. Uh, but this is the big one right here. Pine Timber and Pine Sap. This shit is juiced. Bracken, by the way, pretty much always sells at max price. So it's still just, it's a, it's a slam dunk node. It's fine if you have the contribution for it. But Pine Timber and Pine Sap typically always sell at max price. Pine Sap is used at very critical alchemy reagents for some of the better elixirs in the game. Uh, and Pine Timber is used, like, people process Pine Timber and it's used for all sorts of things. Bracken's dead? Oh no, is Bracken dead? Bracken may have died. It, Bracken is not dead. It is down from max price currently, but it, it kind of spike. It, it will fluctuate. Notice it was at max price for a long time. So yeah, it's lowering right now, but it's still definitely worth it to get into. What thirty three thousand of it takes to you know this twenty million silver. That's not bad at all. I wouldn't say that that is dead. Damn it, I keep closing the game. I would not say that that is dead. I would say that that is still a profitable node. It's not bad. Uh, one to watch though for sure. But definitely the pine sap, pine timber, and here's another one. So you have a pine tap pine simber right here. This is a really good note if you're looking for for uh, money. 
Here's another one. Pine Timber, Pine Sap. These are all just like one contribution. Invest, bang, and go, baby. These are really, really good. And honestly, we want to have these on a low runtime. So nope, say, be up county. Uh, honestly, hold on. Let me... We know that Bamboe County needs to be from Del Boy Village because they're the closest. So let's take a look at these. This is Crystal of Decimation. Again, that's one of the new crystals uh, with Trace of Earth. Slam dunk. Can't go wrong right there. Uh, came across a number of people that are duplicating items and that Lunars have dropped so hard. Is that true? I I don't know about... No. No. Well, I mean, accuracy accessories are dropping hard because they gave away a lot of free accuracy accessories and rolly boxes. It's not because there's some exploit. It's because they gave the entire server like eight chances at an enhanced accuracy accessory. Don't even worry about that. FYI, top left of the map, you can set points on the sign to move around the map quick. Okay, that's that's fair. Honestly, there is something that I want to go over right after we go over the Bombay County nodes. Um, and again, we want to uh, we want to assign Dalbol Village because they're the closest here. No matter what I do. Um, so this is a Dokebi worker. Yeah, sure. Crystal of this five hours, 50 minutes. Sure. Right. I'm not trying to be crazy sweaty. Okay. Maple Timber. Slam dunk. Sells very close to max or at least really high on the market marketplace. Maple sap is used in very critical alchemy recipes. Slam dunk. Can't go wrong. Old tree bark is used in all kinds of shit and is extremely expensive and difficult to get. And difficult to get. Did I say Dalbo? Yeah. Chat, don't don't click on that. That guy's banned. There's these weird um there's this scam going around on Twitch where partners will come into your chat um and link stuff that looks legitimate. Never click that stuff. Yeah, never click that stuff. Ever. Um, what was I just checking? What was I just checking? Oh, Bombay County from Dalboy Village. Okay, so make sure that both of these are coming from the correct place. They are. Oh, yeah. Old Tree Bark. Old Tree Bark. Let's make sure that this is good. Yeah, this is this is still like, okay, it's bottomed out a little bit. It's lost a little bit of its luster probably because that node exists. But like, it's still difficult to get. Honestly, the only way that you used to, you used to be able to get this is to invest a lot of contribution. It's tough. And especially if you want to get into Carrick's and stuff, you need old tree bark. If you want to get into... Gosh. If you want to get into um, sailing and stuff in BDO, you will need old tree bark to complete some of the upgrades on your boats. Just my, be mindful. Uh, hey, Blue, are there any upcoming node wars that I could merc for? I haven't experienced any yet, and they seem so much fun. Yeah, Sony, absolutely. Absolutely. And if you just want to jump in on the guild, too, we could probably get you a fucking spot so you can just come... Uh, all the time. So hit me up on Discord. I'll try to hit you up this week. We have Wednesday, Friday. We have two Node Wars this week. Stop minimizing. Yeah, I'll cut it out of the YouTube video. It'll be fine. Uh, okay, so there's a node up here. Berry Forest. Tiger Flower. <laughs> Cedar Timber and Spirits Leaf. This, okay, yeah, that's a good node. We're, we want that node. We definitely want that node. Um, what am I pulling for this? We don't want Bracken anymore. Fuck the Bracken. Um, we honestly want to, we want to come from Dalbol Village here, probably. Okay. You can just go through your worker empire and just choose the lowest time required. You can do that, too. You don't have to get crazy sweaty with it, but there is, like, a whole system that goes into it. Um. Okay. All right. We'll just do it. Nampo right here. Okay, sure. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I would like... I would like this cedar timber node with spirits leaf is pretty juicer. Yeah, that's this is a really good node. Cedar timber typically sells at max price because again, all of the timbers for the most part sell at max price with the exception of palm timber, which is essentially fucking useless. Um, like except for traders use it, they process, they make it into crates and stuff. But like, um, even palm timber is worth taking. It's really solid because you get coconuts from that note as we will go over later. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of what I do in the new region. Uh, that's pretty much all the nodes that you have to go over in the new region right there. Kind of bang straight through it. There are other types of workers here. Uh, the turtles are basically giants as we described before. Uh, the hares are basically goblins and the, the dokepis are basically just like in between. A kind of goblin humanoid. What about Hamo Island? 
with this one. Yeah, so Trace of Memory is an amazing... Yeah, okay, so this is a good one. This is Trace of Memory's amazing node. I don't necessarily really like this, though. I can get Trace of Memory from another node in my work, Rampire. I'll think about it. But, like, there are better things here. Um, if you have an extra worker, this is a great node. Trace of Memory is very hard to get, and it's used in... Um, I think it's the back attack elixir. It's it's one of the very critical, um, uh, like lethal assassin or something. It's used in one of the very critical alchemy reagents for late game players. So it's always going to be worth stuff. The reason I don't like it very much is because it only drops trace of memory and it does not bring trace of memory back every time. It's only like every other time. And it, when it does, break, it's only like one to three. It's kind of annoying. Right? What color is your worker? All of my workers are uh, orange because they're artisan. That's the highest grade. If you're just starting off, though, uh, the best way to get workers, uh, well, we'll we'll let the we'll let the wagon kind of come back around here. But the best way to get workers is to just roll them in front of the worker, uh, the worker guy at any major city. Uh, and honestly, if you're a new player, professional workers are just fine. Don't just do professional workers, level them up to level 20, and then upgrade them to artisan or attempt to. It's RNG. It takes like eight hours or something for the test to go through. Um, but yeah, just hit hit level 20 because after level 20, it takes really, it's a really long time to hit level 30. So like just get them to level 20. They have two upgrade attempts. If they fail, just dumpster the worker and get a new one. And for the path wagon. Yeah, this is a forest path wagon. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we're actually going to come up on the worker guy here. I'm going to show you how to roll workers real quick. How do you level them? You just put them on the node. This is why we do live guides, is so that people can ask stuff that I'm going to forget. Uh, you just put the worker on the node, and it levels up naturally as it makes revolutions on the node. One thing to note about leveling up a worker is that it's based on how many revolutions it makes. So if you put it... If you're leveling a worker, ideally... Like, if I was a leveling Avelia worker, I would put him on, like, Logia Farm because the runtime is really short. He's going to level up really fast. Right? He's going to level up really, really fast. Um, okay, so if you want to get workers, go to the worker exchange. Do not buy skilled workers. That is dumb. Do not do that. You can buy... I, I, I would argue that you should really only buy artisan workers. So decide early on what kind of worker that you really want to prioritize and then make and, and then work with it. Okay. But, like, the best way to get workers is to just roll. You click on contract workers, and then you... Okay, well, I can't... I've got the most amount of workers possible. But normally, when you click contract workers... Hmm, there isn't a bit... You can basically just roll workers. You can set uh, the ability... Uh, or, like, what... Uh, what level you want to roll for. Artisans are really rare. So you always make always buy artisans always and a pro tip when you're talking to this guy make sure you have some silver in your inventory if you don't have silver with you you can't lock it or wait like if you just don't have silver you're just shit out of luck if you roll by something really good and you don't have silver it's a tough shit like so make sure you have silver when you go to roll the workers okay that's very important um okay all right let's do uh margoria really quick uh, this is an example of a node that's very specialized that you really don't want to take unless you're unless you're me. I'm super into bartering. I'm super into life skilling and stuff like that. This this node right here is to help you make uh, blue boat gear. And I and I send this goblin, this artisan uh, goblin from Ilya. And you'll notice it's four and a half hours. I don't really care because it helps give me the stuff that I need for my blue boat gear. There's also there, there's a node here that helps you get a piece of the blue boat gear. There's a node up here. Uh, it's up here somewhere. Is it this one? Yeah, there it is. Okay, it's Tinbera. Okay, and then there's a node up here as well, I believe, that Larau. Yeah, Larau Island has the last one. So there's four of these um, up here. And it really, you should not be taking this unless you're super into bartering and you know you're going to get blue gear on your Carrick. It's not worth doing. But if you are going to go for blue gear, you need to start this up early. Like, if you know you're into it, like, because it takes forever for these workers to bring in bring in these materials. Uh, gathering, got my mana pot piece and one tanning knife. Holy shit, Crystal Chan, you're a, you're a gamer. You're gaming. You're gaming. Aside from that, there's only one Margoria node that I recommend you take. Um, Port Aferia, every single town gets it. One free worker. Bartering bad? No, bartering's pretty good. 
Artering's pretty good. It got an update. It's it's received some quality of life changes. It's really solid. You can make like one to 1.2 bill a day, and it's just really chill. You hit T and sail around on your boat. It's really nice. If Wind Waker was your favorite Zelda game, bartering is a lot of fun. It was certainly mine. Uh, every single um, city in the game gives you uh, a free worker slot. So to be clear, uh, every single one. So uh, you notice I only have one worker in um, uh, Portiferia here, and that's fine. This man's job is to gather on these little fish nodes. Now, sometimes people go overkill with the fish nodes. I'm going to be honest with you. Fish nodes are really not fucking crazy worthwhile unless you're making feed uh, for your pets. Okay, good feed and stuff like that are going to, that's going to be necessary. You're going to need um, fish and stuff like this. Now, I will say that like, oh, well, why not take the closer one? It's less contribution. It's because this further one right here at Rand, uh, Randis Island, this is the closest one you can get that actually gives you octopus. Octopus is technically seafood or... Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's called seafood. It's it's a, its own category. It doesn't count as a fish. Um, it doesn't count as a fish. It actually counts as something different entirely. So for cooking, it's really good to have this node because you're bringing in octopus and fish all the time. You'll notice it's got a really long run time though. Uh, although they did they did bring it down relatively recently. Would you consider making a bartering guide at some point? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, we'll probably do a live guide something like this. Uh, workers and nodes seem to be like a chore to me. Do I have to play this part of the game to be viable or skip it? Oh, you can totally skip all this crap. Yeah, Misho, you don't have to do any of this. I will say it's a lot of passive income and it's a lot of fun for players that want to build up passive income and just, just like make money just sitting in town and like do alchemy and gathering and cooking and stuff like this. The node empire will be worth worthwhile for you. Okay, let's do Balanos. This is another very critical region. If you have a low amount of contribution... This is your shit. OG Bigfoot, how you doing, big man? Um, this is your shit. These are your nodes. As you start in the new region, get those nodes. Those are really good. These nodes are really good too, okay? This right here, this chicken meat and egg node, top tier. Eggs are used in tons of recipes in cooking, and they're always, uh, they're always needed on the marketplace. They're big money. Big money, okay? Um, some recipes, basically the only throttle is eggs. So there will always be a demand for eggs. Chicken meat, um, cooking is dead. No, it is not. Cooking meat, because Imperial is, Imperial is still really solid. Like selling, uh, meals on the marketplace. Yeah, I would agree. It's not very good. Chicken meat is used in a very critical recipe that I want to cover with you guys real quick. quick. Uh, most of the guys that you're going to see, um, are going to tell you that you need to use beer. Oh my God, feed your workers with beer. I'm just gonna do a comparison real quick. This is stupid. Don't ever fucking do this. Beer costs 3,000 per make and it only gives you worker recovery plus two. This is stupid. This is dumb. This is used, beer is used for the Balanos meal and like that is it. Okay, don't, don't use beer for anything else. Okay, now we're gonna go to grilled bird meat. Notice it's 1.2k. It's less than half the cost of beer. And it gives your worker three stamina recovery instead of two. This is way better. I make my own beer. Make your own grilled bird meat. Sell the beer. Sell the beer. Don't feed your workers beer. You're just tanking it. Okay? You're just tanking it. Um, so make sure you're using grilled bird meat. Grilled bird meat is... Uh, the reason I bring it up now is because chicken meat... That's basically the recipe that chicken meat is used for. Is grilled bird meat. It's really good. And because people always need to be feeding their workers, there's always a demand for grilled bird or serve. There's a, always a demand for chicken meat on the market. Do you see it's not bottomed out? You could sell it. Like if you wanted to just sell it instead of using it, it's worth a decent amount of money. It's worth a decent amount of money. It's a good node. Um, you need, uh, this is also the, uh, this is also the node that, uh, you need for the new event that's going on right now. The Finto farm event. Um, and so notice how I have all these workers. Okay. Uh, to be clear, you can only actually use workers that are connected. I already have all of these nodes connected. Uh, and I'm not going to rip the contribution out unless I want to change it. But understand that, that this is, you can actually see, this is good because you guys can actually see the path in which all of the nodes are, all the different nodes are actually connected and how I'm connecting my different empire. If you just want to pause the video or whatever. Um, but Finto farm chicken meat um i'm honestly gonna put a goblin on this because this is like we want maximum revolutions oh my god okay so an interesting thing is it worth fishing c20 boots now that the region comes out soon very funny 
Oh, finishing C20 boots. No, you probably just keep them at C10. You probably just keep them at C10. If that's what you're... If you're already ready for it. But, like, I, I have C20 boots, and they'll probably just release a coffers event. So, yes. To be honest with you, yes. Just get C20. Um, If your worker is level 40, guys, you can actually tell your workers where you want them to deposit the item. Now, keep in mind that your, your node still has to be connected to the city that that worker is from. Okay, so if I want this... If I want Finto Farm, I, it's connected to Velia. Okay, so I have to use a Velia worker here. I can't use something from Alta Nova. The two, no, the two cities are not connected. Also, the run distance would be atrocious. Um, yeah, we're going to use Velia. And honestly, for now... Oh, man, where do I want to actually move? Oh, man, this is juiced. That This only works... You can change which city you actually want them to deposit the shit in. This is new. That only works if your worker is level 40. Okay, and I just want to be honest with you guys. It takes about two or three months to get your worker to level 40 from level one. If they're working around the clock, it takes a while. It's kind of an end game uh, thing. Giant's better for those chicken nodes. You could argue. Let's see what the goblin versus giant uh, difference is here. Uh, giant worker and belly at 42 minutes uh, against 31 minutes. Okay, so like he's almost 50% faster. But the giant's going to get more eggs and stuff. I mean, I'm going to run with a goblin here. But yeah, you can make a case for the giant. I'm going to have him deposited in Velia now for now. I'm not sure uh, exactly where I want to go. with. Actually, you know what? I take it back. I take it back. Here's what we're going to do, guys. Oh, jeez. I'm going to put this. Grana is my central hub for everything cooking. We're just going to... You just send it straight to Grana. Just send it straight to Grana. This is a W. Look, this is the, I told you, I'm a life skill. I make things. I make things. This is, I make things. Okay. My alchemy uh, setup is in uh, Duvencrim. Oh, man, we're actually full here. We're going to have to move some of this stuff. Hmm. That's not good. You see, I have all my elixirs and stuff right there as well. Uh, thanks for the follow. Slowly dying, you're a hero. Uh, Potato is actually a good node. If you guys want this node, this is actually a really solid node. Um, if I have extra workers, I'm gonna remember. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put it on the potato note. Anything that's potato, wheat, barley, corn, all of that stuff is used to make beer, uh, and different uh, variations of flour and dough. All of those are very critical, essential uh, forms for cooking, and so those things are actually worth a worth a decent amount. Do they have to walk to Grana to deposit? No, they do not. It's the same run distance. It just appears in Grana instead of Velia. This is critical if you're a new player, if you're doing this event. Um, we're going to do maximum run time. And if we want luck, honestly, probably. So Copium, I'm going to use a human worker from Belly on this. I don't think luck didn't matter for this bag thing. Uh, that's what you think. You think that they coded it correctly. Joke's on you. I'm, I'm on the Copium that that, that, is, that matters. Yeah. All right, so again, the potato nodes are really good. Any sort of wheat node, and I say wheat, but understand that I mean like um, barley, wheat, corn, potato. Um, wheat itself, I just fucked up my auto path. But all of that stuff is always in super high demand on the marketplace, and they're always going to be really high quality nodes, which is why that potato node is actually really good. I have a goblin on the mine and the other on the rare majority of the time. Yeah, I'll show you. Uh, I'm going to show them. I'm a show him. I'm a show him. I'm a show him. I used tend to use Northern Wheat Plantation for those. Actually, this has a much better yield than Northern Wheat Plantation does. Um, one thing that I do want to cover with you really quick, guys, this is some fucking insider trading knowledge that very few people know about, except for the people that I've told it about. Up in the top of right hand of your screen, you see all these different things that you can change the map into. Um, there's one up here named... Uh, where is it called? Territory Resource Information. And you'll notice that all of these bars show up, and this is probably very confusing to a lot of players. Um, honestly, these bars don't have much use. Uh, if you don't know what you're looking at, the blue bars or whatever, you don't care about those. I won't even get into it. The gold bars have to do with investment banking. Don't worry about that either. No one gives a shit. You're looking at the green bars. Okay. In this game, if less people have the node... Like, if left, less players have the node running, the node will bring you more resources. Okay? So you'll notice that Velia doesn't have a green bar here. So the resource allocation for these nodes around this region is going to be really fucking low. 
But if I go up to Northern Medaya, well, not very many players have that node, even though it's really fucking good. Because it's really, it's a lot. It is a lot to invest into that node. A lot of contribution. So less players have that. So you'll notice your worker is actually going to bring back more of a yield from those nodes. Okay. Um, a good example of this is the Trace of Origin node. There's a Trace of Origin node at Glish Ruins or is this Glish Swamp or whatever the fuck. It's like right around here. And you'll notice that this is at 0%, but right, its neighbor is still at 100. That's because everyone has this Trace of Origin node. It's really fucking good. Trace of Origin is used for all kinds of stuff in the game. And this is the easiest node to kind of get, uh, obtain it from. Uh, there is another Trace of Origin, but you'll notice it's at 0%, so you're getting very low yield. But if you really want Trace of Origin... There is a node called Fountain of Origin, and it gives you Trace of Origin. Now, it's a lot more contribution to invest to get out of here, but you're going to get a lot more Trace of Origin from this node. Notice there's very few people that actually have this node. So you're going to get a much higher yield from this. Um, Psycho Sword 111, thanks for the follow, buddy. Yeah, this is how you know someone. This is somebody that knows what the fuck he's talking about. I'm bringing, This is tech. This is ancient tech. The more you know, knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. So you look over here. This is another good example. Um, one of the rarest resources in the game right now, for whatever reason, is Opal. Opal is actually surprisingly difficult to come by. Uh, and there's a node, like, right here that gives um, Opal, as we will discuss. And that's why there's... It's like, oh my gosh, why is Sandgrain bizarre? Why, why is that at zero? It's because that Opal node is sitting there. Uh, there's also a there's also another node up here called there's a nutmeg node here as well uh, that is also very very good, right? And it's also very good. So that's by the if you if you just want to see okay, in, in just because the bar is empty does not mean the node is going to be dog shit. You'll notice I recommended the chicken meat and the egg node and stuff, even though there's no bar here. That's fine. It doesn't mean it's going to be dog shit. It just understand that like when you're making your uh, empire, this is what these bars mean. Do you have a YouTube? I absolutely do. We post on it every day every single day we have a choose your class guide on there where we make live guides just like this one we show people how to do pvp we show people how to do pve all kinds of stuff okay um all right so logia farm this is another potato node we love potato nodes we're big fans of potato although yeah the reason i have this particular potato node, you're like well why don't you have this potato node it's because i had to choose one and i chose the other fucking one i chose this one I chose this one mainly because it'll get me to imp cave. The imp cave is a solid note. It gives you copper. Uh, copper is surprisingly worthwhile. You think that copper is actually really fucking common? Believe it or not, copper is used for so much shit that the demand is just demand and supply are actually not bad. Copper sells for a decent amount. Powder of flames minned out, but fuck it, it's worth a decent amount too. Yeah, just pure copper. If you just want to go sell copper ore on the fucking marketplace, it's really not bad. You would think that something this common would be minned out. It is not even close. It's not even close. It's, it, there's always a demand here. It's not bad at all. And then a powder of flame. I, I would say it's not the best node. If you don't have good contribution, if you're a new player, no. No. Don't do this. If you're a new player, if you have like 350 or more contribution, this, these are solid nodes. These are reasonable. When is the first break? I'm not sure what you mean by break. I'm old school. I still say, uh, stay with my humans and giants. I have giants mainly and humans as well. Humans for nodes, which have uh, more than one ingredients. Giants for close nodes, and eventually a goblin here and there for far away nodes. Yeah, exactly. Always with the humans with the two, at least two nodes, especially for the eggs. Right. So generally speaking, the strategy is to put um, giants on really close nodes. Because then they won't run out of energy so quickly, right? Giants are also amazing for doing your farms. Best in slot for farms. Giants are absolutely best in slot for farms, and they're best in slot for workshops. If you're packaging crates, uh, or you're making uh, functional cooking clothes, or, or, or anything like that, or any of the functional clothes for that matter, they're best in slot for that as well. So I have a lot of giants because they're very versatile for that reason. But like, a lot of people swear by their their goblins, and I don't blame them. Uh, some people like there's some rare Giga Chads that like their humans, and that's fine too. You know, every 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 person is entitled to their stupid opinion. Um. Iron Earth, this is honestly, if you have a low amount of contribution, this is a top tier node right here. It's two contribution. Iron Ore is a slam dunk. Everybody always needs iron. Powder of Darkness is always in demand. It's worth a shitload. Absolutely, fuck yeah, it's right there. It's low hanging fruit. Take that fucking node. This is, again, this is about the same as the other one. It's one extra contribution. If you have a low amount of contribution, like, okay, that's fine. 
That's fine. Yeah, sure. Uh, put it put it on there. Well, uh, let's throw let's throw some Velia workers on here. I'm actually forgetting. Uh, yeah, we're gonna do the same method here. I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a goblin here. Actually, no, that's that's way too short. A man. I kind of want. I have a lot of giants, and to be honest with you, I just took off one of my Olvia. So there's a you're gonna run into problems when you're making your worker empire when there's a lot of nodes around certain cities, and then there's fucking garbage around other cities. Olvi is a perfect example. There is dog shit around this city. Olives are fucking like whatever. Don't even bother. They're not worth doing. Um, grapes are okay because they count as fruit for cooking. So like that's fine, but you can just buy cheaper fruits doing other shit like farming and stuff. So like I don't even recommend doing grape unless you're a big cook and you're like, fuck it. I just I have the extra contribution laying around. Sure, go for it. But if not, don't even fucking bother. Wolf Hills... The, Ash Timber, unless you are super, super, super crazy. By the way, on Timber Nodes, I, I use Giants almost exclusively on Tinder Nodes because for whatever reason, I found that, that my Goblins just burn out so fast and they don't bring me anything. And they don't bring me anything. Sadly, he is only level 39, so I can't tell him where to go. Yeah, there's a fruit vendor that you can buy stuff from, but it is a little more expensive uh, than the grapes, I believe. Um... Where do bad rainbows go? I don't know. It's a D's nuts joke, though. I just don't know. I don't know how it's going to hit me, but I feel like that's a D's nuts joke. Okay, Coastal Cliff. Fortune teller mushrooms. Oh, my God. Don't take that's a garbage note. Don't even... Yeah, don't even... Mushroom nodes in Black Desert are, for the most part, dog shit. Don't even bother. Don't even look at them. You can just... If you need them... The only reason you need mushrooms in BDO is for alchemy. Okay? Um... Do you have an RNG? Do you have do you value the RNG sack, farmer, miner, etc.? The sacks are fucking super value. I will say that the sacks are giga value. I've opened enough of them at this point to know you absolutely want a gun for the sacks. They're super good. Um the any the mushrooms in BDO are just really bad because you only really need them when you're doing alchemy. They're not really used for anything else, and you only need like a few thousand at a time. But if you have one of those mushroom nodes running all the time. You're going to get hundreds of thousands of mushrooms that you have no way to dispose of, and they're crap. Trade crates. Yeah, no. I'm not recommending that. Do not take mushroom nodes. It's really just not a good idea. Um, this is the iron ore node that we love so much. Um, the goblin worker from Heidel. No, I really want this worker to come from Olvia. I really want this worker because Olvia just doesn't have very many good uh, things around it. We'll, we'll go with the human worker. That's fine because it'll get it'll bring me a good sack. He's level 40. And so I'm gonna have him go to Calpheon because that's where I like all my my ore and stuff to go to. Okay, all of my process stuff is typically put in Calpheon. So you can see I have plywoods in here and steel and stuff. Um that's kind of where I like my my stuff to go there. Um Okay. Alright, yeah. Fuck the fortune teller bullshit. Uh we'll actually take that guy off. We're gonna put him on the iron ore. Uh, sack opening is changing, so you can do them all at once. Amazing. That's why I'm saving them all. That's why I'm saving them all. Um, we want this person to come from Olvia. Remember, I can only do this because Olvia is connected to Velia via the node system. So just bear that in mind. Uh, I'm just gonna use, sure, a giant is fine. I don't care. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, this is another node that, like, I'm gonna keep for now. Honestly... I don't really... You know what? I'm actually going to trade this out. I actually think the potato node is actually more worthwhile. If I'm being entirely honest, I think that this potato node is probably worth more. Right here. Because again, especially when cooking is up tremendous, potatoes are worth bongo bucks. Potatoes are worth money. Because uh, they're used for wheat and stuff. I mean, they're used for uh, flour and dough and stuff. Like, people always need this stuff. Um, Where is my... Do I have any other Olvia workers? Did I use all my Olvia workers? Oh, this is good. All right, so we're on Velia workers exclusively. He's really close. I'm going to give him... I'm going to give it to the... I'll give it to the giant. We'll see how the giant does. Uh, Sir, not sure, but on a side note, did you invest in the, land, the nodes in Land of the Morning Light yet? I absolutely did. We did cover that already. You can kind of scroll back through the VOD, or if you want to look it up on YouTube, uh, I'll have it time-stamped for the different regions. Uh, again, chicken meat and egg nodes. Uh, the, you always want to start with Land of the Morning Light as a new player. Those are your first nodes. High, super fucking high value. 
crazy high value. Cannot go wrong with that. Um, chicken meat, and this is the second region that you kind of come to. Okay, that's why we're doing this second. Uh, so low contribution people, these are your nodes. Chicken meat, this is your shit right here. You can't go wrong. We're gonna go with the um, we're gonna send it straight to Grana because that's where we do our cooking. We're gonna send it straight to Grana because that's where we do our cooking. Potatoes. Um, again, we're gonna send these to Grana because that's where we do all. Actually, you know what? I don't have enough room in Grana. Ah, shit. I need to clear Grana out a little bit, but you know what? We are gonna send this to Grana because I'm I'm feeling it. Um, we'll do we'll do another worker or a human here. No, I did it to Velia. No, go back. All right, we're going to go to Grana here. Ah, change. Good. All right, we're good now. Uh, Joseph Banak and uh, Sean Uff. Thanks for those follows, guys. Oh, my God, I missed a sub. So Flum XC with the resub for four months. Welcome back, buddy. I'm so sorry I missed it. I really appreciate that support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, man, remember me? Token boost. Well, you're a first-time chatter, so no. <laughs> it tells me who first-time chatters are, big man. Um, okay, so we're going to run this. This is, again, this is a potato node. Potato nodes are really good. Uh, we'll run this. Uh, sure, giant. Uh, excellent. Sure. Um, okay, these corn nodes, believe it or not, these seem really good. Take the potato nodes... Before you take the corn nodes. Take the potato nodes before you take... These are really low yield. For whatever reason, no matter what worker I have tried to put on these nodes, these are ridiculously low yield nodes and very low priority uh, for people. If you have like 350 to 400 contribution, okay, you can consider taking the corn node, but I warn you, these are pretty low value. These are pretty low value. Um, I have a lot of extra Heidel workers... And I like to use my extra Heidel goblins uh, on these nodes. So that is what we are going to do. Again, this is a situation where I have to run them from another town. Uh, just because ah, there's just too many workers. And Heidel, Heidel has incredibly good storage for contribution. Uh, this top up here, this top, this little zone right here. This is your best bang for your buck in terms of contribution in Heidel. It's one of the only cities left in the game that I actually have bought. Uh, I have contribution spent on workers uh, in Heidel. It gives you a tremendous... I forget how many... This is five workers. This is three. That's eight, ten, eleven. Eleven worker lodging slots, and it's for like eight or ten contribution. It's really good. You cannot really go wrong with that. Um, purple. Okay, but... Because of that, it means I have a surplus of workers in Heidel, which means I have to tell them to do stuff over in, like, Ancient Stone Chamber, for example. Now, on these excavation nodes, there's two schools of thought here, okay? Um, the first is, okay, well, you can put a goblin worker on it and try to decrease runtime as much as possible, or you can put a human worker on it and try to increase the amount of luck that you get. Um, excavation nodes always give you traces. In this case... Um, this long time ago, before, um, Kama Sylvia was even a thing, this was the best node in the game. Uh, it's still a very good node, but it's not the best node in the game. It gives you Trace of Earth and Trace of Ascension. We talked about this. Those are alchemy reagents. Super fucking good. Um, and so it is very worth getting. Very worth getting. More luck, more sacks. Best in slot, run the humans. You know, I... Normally, I used to run the goblins all the time on these nodes because luck was kind of a meme. But nowadays, I am going to try a human. I really am going to try a human. I've never done a human on this node before, but we're going to give it a go. We're going to give it a go. And you know what? I'm going to run that to, to Dregan or to Duvencroon because that's where my alchemy is. Okay. All right. Well, hold on. Let me pull something out of... I... All right. I need to pull something out of here. Uh, let's get, uh, honestly, let's just remove these, uh, too heavy. Okay, fuck. All right, pull that out and pull out, uh, I don't know. I just need something light, you know, uh, a couple elixirs, sure. We'll pull those out for now. Just kind of a quick fix there. Okay, all right, so, again, we want to use the human, and I'm going to run him from Heidel because I have a surplus of Heidel workers. Um... I'm not sure where all of my Heidel... There we go. Heidel human. 
Okay, we're going to run that to Duvencroon. Because that's where I do all my alchemy. Wait, did I not? Oh, oh this is kind of tedious now. I haven't done this in a while since they changed it, but you have to change it. You always change the runtime to 50,000. You hit F, you hit enter. This way, they keep doing it over and over and over again without you having to tell them to do it over and over and over I'm again. Okay? We, that's right. I'm not fucking leaving! We're not fucking leaving, that's right. There you go. Okay, so you always set it to the maximum runs. Maximum runs. All right, Forest of Seclusion. This is a great node, but really it's because of the Maple Timber Monk's Branch. That shit is juicer. This shit is juicer. Maple Timber, again, a Timbers. We talked about Timbers. Timbers are always good. Can't go wrong with Timber. Except for maybe Palm. Palm Timber kind of fucking blows, but you know what? Not the worst. Not the worst. Um, Again, I'm probably... You know what? I'm going to run these from... Uh, let's see, 47 minutes... Oh my god, look at the runtime. Oh wait, no, that's a that's a goblin. Alright, give me uh 28 minutes. What's a goblin worker from Hyda look like? Or from Velia look like? Oh, I only have giants from Velia. Okay, so Heidel, do I have any giants from Heidel? Is it faster from Heidel is what I'm wondering. Let's see. Yeah, fuck it. I'm just gonna run. Oh, there we go. 47 minutes. Yeah, no, we're just going to run it from Velia because it's 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 basically the same anyway, and I have to get the Velia workers used up anyway. All right, there we go. All right, there we go. Uh, this node right here, again, this is Copper and Powder of Flame. Yeah. Meh. Copper's pretty good. You do want a couple Copper nodes. It's worthwhile, but, like, if you don't have a lot of contribution, this is not a fucking priority node. Okay. Uh... Ch -ch -ch -ch. We're gonna again we're gonna use our we're gonna use our giant there. The worker order is supposed to be from fastest to slowest. Yeah, but I'm using I'm using my uh I'm using different cities here. Okay, so if you come out this way, you've got forest of plunder. Again, this is mushrooms. What do we say about mushrooms? The dog shit. They are mistakes. Ash timber and spirits leaf. This is the best ash timber node in the game. Um I absolutely recommend this node. Spirits leaf is also really uh expensive and useful. Yeah, <clears throat> can't really go wrong with that. Yeah, so it is organized by um by minutes run, um, but it's misleading because it's coming from different places. So the human worker in Velia, although it's forty four minutes, is probably better efficient, better efficiently, or in terms of overall efficiency, than the goblin worker from Heidel. Even though the Heidel worker is technically faster, speed is not everything. You know what I mean? All right, so Timber, we want Timber to go to Calpheon if we we're able. So that's where we're going to send that. This is Copper and Rough Translucent Crystal. If th This is where you want to bring your Copper. Remember earlier I was like, eh, Copper's good, you know, but like whatever. This is the node that you really want to get your Copper from. Rough Translucent Crystal is a fucking W. It's basically always maxed out at max price because, again, it is a node war repair material. Everyone always fucking needs this shit. So, like... It's just a slam dunk. Copper's good. Rough translucent crystal is like fucking S tier. Uh, you can't go wrong with that. So let's look at um, let's 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 get the Velia workers used up here. Ghost mushrooms to take frenzy. Yeah, no, you're not gonna make that many frenzies. You, there's no shot unless you're Zephy and maybe you get one node. All right, so up here, ash timber, ash sap, probably debatably the best ash node in the game but the sap is not as common as the translucent crystal and the sack is not necessarily as great because it doesn't drop as frequently um for whatever reason from this particular fucking node um i consider the rough translucent crystal a little bit uh or i'm sorry I, I consider this spirits leaf a little bit stronger but like the ash sap is really fucking good it's used in making fishing boats which people like to make it's used in alchemy recipes you can't go wrong with it it's really solid really solid this is a really good high value node for low contribution players okay so we take that node uh you can go up here uh this is dog shit do not take sunrise herb or pile of sunrise herbs even at max price sunrise herb is really not efficient to really take all right this is another fortune teller mushroom node fuck that shit we don't we don't care about that um any of these specialty crates don't fucking worry about those those are basically useless that's very outdated shit now um, we talked about all this stuff. 
Translucent from Dokebi Forest. Yeah, no, we talked about that. I'm thinking about ripping these out. But honestly, I'll just run them from Heidel. Fuck it. We're just going to run these from Heidel with, with goblins. Um, and I will send them to Calpheon. It's not a bad idea. Bring that down. All right, we're back. Rolling workers going to take forever. Uh, it's five energy per worker roll. I recommend just rolling for professional workers and sending it. Then you level the professional workers to level 20 uh, and upgrade them to artisan. If they fail both attempts, they were too stupid to fucking pass the IQ test anyway. Just dumpster them and move on to the next professional worker. Okay. Um, so we just discussed those. All right. So we're, we're through most of the Balados. Yeah, we're through most of the Balados stuff here. All right, let's move down to Heidel now. I th oh, never mind. I forgot this one. Balanos Forest. This is another Ash Timber Spirits Leaf. We talked about this. This is fucking super good. Uh, I'm going to use the Velia Worker for that. Okay, Sunrise Herb. Oh my god. Get out. Sunrise Herb is so bad. I did try that note out for a while. <laughs> Don't even bother. Just buy it off the market when you need it. If you're looking to get into alchemy, just buy it. I mean, honestly, if you're looking to get into alchemy, it's not the worst idea to have the node running, to be honest with you, because you can just make pure powder reagent over and over and over again. But like, eh, it's miserable. All right, so Northern Heidel Quarry. Now we're on Heidel, okay? There's a lot of nodes around Heidel that are actually worthwhile, okay? Uh, Northern Heidel Quarry, copper ore, sure. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I don't know. I don't really want to use a goblin on that. Copper is heavy. No cap. We're going to send it to Calpheon. We're going to go with a giant worker there. Iron ore with powder of darkness. So if you're higher, if you have a lot of contribution, this copper ore, powder and flame, bad no, don't do that. If you're low on contribution, or unless you're high contribution, don't do this node. This node... Iron ore powder of darkness. Fucking amazing. Why don't you do turn-ins for more CP? I do. I do. I do cooking all the time. Um, Iron ore powder of flame. I mean, uh, outer... Blah, blah, blah. Iron ore powder of darkness is an extremely good node. Uh, we want this running basically all the time. We're going to go with... Um, all right, go. And I want it delivered to Calpheon, please. In a nice little sack bundle. There we go. Your CP is low. No, my CP is high. My CP is 403. I only have two CP available because my entire worker empire is already invested into. Do you have to hire a worker in a certain town for them to be based there? Yes. So if you hire a worker in Heidel, it will be based in Heidel. Okay, that means if you want that worker to do anything, you have to connect contribution-wise to Heidel. Right, if I want a Heidel worker to do something, if I want a Heidel worker to do this node over here, okay, well then Heidel needs to be connected through the node system. Right? Not even 500. This is fucking Christ. <laughs> um, let's see. Alright, Pumpkin. This is an amazing node. Uh, maybe comparing you with hardcore cooks that have 500 CP. I don't... Like, there's only like... God, I can't even think of a person. Do we have even... Yeah, nobody in this, in this guild even has 500 CP. I... I there's probably a handful of people on the whole server that have 500 fucking uh, CP. Over 400 is considered really solid contribution. Like, if you have above 350, you're, you're doing good. You're doing good. For roll, worker rolling, just move alts to each town and keep extra lodging to energy dump on. Yeah, absolutely right. You can roll energy on alts. Remember, you don't have to roll on your main character. Uh, okay, so. Cooking honey... This node is actually declined pretty dramatically in uh, in use. It used to be the only cooking uh, like honey node in the game. It is no longer this way. Uh, there is a much better honey node, and everybody seems to have it now. Probably because I announced it on stream. Uh, <laughs> and now everybody just takes that one. But cooking honey is still definitely reasonably solid. Um, it's the middle of the road. Middle of the road. Uh, pumpkin, however, pumpkin is always pretty good because pumpkin counts as a vegetable for, and most people use pickled vegetables to, like, power level their cooking. They need seven pumpkins per make, so, like, this node is pretty juicer. Yeah, the, the demand for this is really good. You need, um, 
You only need like two contribution or three contribution to get to this node. This is a win for you. This is a win for you. Uh, since you can only get um, pumpkin from this, I'm probably just going to run a goblin here. If I have one. Actually, I don't have a go another goblin in Heidel. Okay, that's... You hate to see that. That's uh, all right. We'll run... I don't want to really waste a human on it. Just run the giant. Sure. Uh, we're going to send him to Grana because that's where I want all of my... That's where I want all of my pumpkin to go. Did I... I didn't set it to... This is... This is going to be a common problem. Yep. This is going to be a common problem. So let's see. I said giant from Heidel. Sure. Then I want to set it to Grana. I have to change it to 50k work times. Otherwise, he, do, he just stops working. He goes on union break. You don't want your workers on union break. You say you will not have unionizing on this account. I will dumpster it. All right. Lynch Farm Ruins is a great one, but you have to go actually talk to the node manager. This is one of the most of these excavation nodes require you to talk to the node manager and chat with them in order to actually discover an excavation on that node. Lynch Farm Ruins is an example of that. Um, so make sure that you talk to the node manager and chat with them. Uh, that being said, we're going to use the human worker strategy here. I kind of want to see how well this does. Uh, we're going to deliver it to um, Duvencroon. Because that's where all my alchemy stuff goes. How much do you play this game per week? A lot. Um, I would say it's less now that I'm a content creator. And a, I, I also am a teacher uh, and a coach. Um, so like... I say a lot, but it's probably 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. So, I probably 25 hours a week, probably. I coach cross country. Yeah. Uh, probably about 25 hours a week. Okay, so Lynch Farm Ruins is really good. Silver Azalea is again used in those basic alchemy. It's basically like Sunrise Herb. You should equate the two in your head. Pure Powder Reagent and uh, Clear Liquid Reagent are the two base components for alchemy that you need for almost every alchemy recipe in the game for the most part. Everybody needs them. And everybody uses them to power level their alchemy up. This is where you would get Silver Azalea. You're not doing this to sell it on the market because it's not worth a whole lot of money. Okay, it's just like Sunrise Herb. If you want to power level your alchemy, okay, the node is probably worth taking. If you're not interested in that, don't even fucking look at it. It doesn't exist. Um, do your students watch your stuff? <laughs> you're crazy. You're nuts. There is not a chance I want a bunch of high schoolers watching. No. No. They have no idea. How much AFK time? I'm AFK all the time. Oh, if you want to include AFK time, then it's like basically 24-7. Um, all right. This is a maple timber node. We're not super enthusiastic about the red tree lumps, but those are used in alchemy, but they, they're usually minned out. It's kind of garbage. What if they happen to play BDO? I'm not going to go into details, but they're not going to fucking play BDO. Yeah. They think that Twitch is for old people um, was the last comment I got uh, from one of my students. And I was like, yeah, you should never go there. It's the dark place. Don't even bother. It's like Facebook, right? LOL. Um, anyway, this is still good because it's a maple node. So you take these. The red tree lumps, we don't really give a shit about though. So I guess we have a lot of human workers in Heidel. We're just, you sure. Sure. I'm not leaving. This is the better node right here. I'm I'm not fucking leaving. What's up, Technic? How you doing, buddy? Tell your students, uh, welcome to the asylum. Yep. Alright. This is pretty solid. Fleece node is good, although it's declined in recent months. It's still really good. This is the only node that you can actually get fleece from in the game. Oh wow, it's up at 3k. Never mind. This is fucking juiced. Fleece is fucking ju when the fuck did fleece hit 3k? I'm not leaving. I'm not fucking leaving! Yeah, see, it's higher. Normal, I'm used to it being on here. So yeah, this is the only place to get fleece in the game. So if there's a shortage, you're up tremendous. You can just wait and sell that at a shortage, right? Your students watch your stream. Again, no. Absolutely not. No, they don't even know that this exists. Uh, Kalioski, thanks for that follow, buddy. I appreciate it. Nor, nor will they ever, because I don't want the two lives. I keep my work and my play very separated. Or my work and my other work. I, I, I For understandable reasons, this is my outlet. If you had students watching on this outlet, I wouldn't be able to express myself uh, in my normal way. You guys would lose. It would not be as good. You guys would hate it. Um, 
Okay. All right. So we went over all these. Uh, this fleece note is really good. We're going to put a human on this because you can get yarn from it. Um, although, if I had a goblin, I'd probably just throw the goblin on it and say, fuck it, I don't care. Um, fleece can probably go to Calpion. Probably where we need to go. Change to teach mode, please. On teach mode, I don't ever cuss or anything. There's no cussing. My the All of the... Everything is very PG. It's basically the same thing. I'm still making jokes and stuff, but everything is PG. And there's no cussing or anything. Uh, wheat. This is an amazing wheat node. It only gives you wheat, but it's still pretty high value. It's really solid. You don't really want to waste a human on it if you can avoid it. So you kind of want to throw a giant on this. Anything that only has one thing that you can get from the node, like in this case, that you can only get wheat here, you really want your giants on those nodes. You really want your giants on. This has two things. You can get flax and flax thread. We don't really give a shit about flax and flax thread. Uh, so I'm going to throw another giant on that one too. Um, it's a Flax is actually a pretty solid note because people use flax to level their processing overnight uh, without having to buy weight, which is really good. What subject do you teach? Biology, astronomy, forensics, uh, and ecology. Uh, pumpkin node, again, slam dunk. You want a giant on this as well if you can afford it. Because again, there's only one there's only one resource to get here. That's fine. Wheat, again, you want a giant here. And flax. These are all great nodes for low contribution people, except for maybe flax is like middle of the road. I would put flax at I would rate it as like, okay, if you're over 300, 250, 300 contribution, you can take the flax node. It's probably worthwhile. The cut the housing in Heidel is really not all that bad. Um Giant worker in Heidel. All right, so that's our last giant worker that we're using on that. Uh, Spiffy McGee, thanks for that follow, big guy. I appreciate it. It has to be... Oh, yeah. So it has to be level 40 if you want it to deliver it to a very specific town. Not all of my workers are level 40 yet, and I just want you guys to be aware that since that change has been implemented, my workers have been working around the clock to try to get to level 40. So it takes months to go from level 30 to level 40. It takes months of worker rotations. Okay, so Glitch Ruins, we talked about this. Trace of Origin is fucking juicer, boys. So although it's really, really low on, like, the value in terms of, like, the, the yield per node, Trace of Origin is still good enough that you absolutely want to take this node. This is really good. Uh, I'm going to drop a human on it and let it deliver to Glitch. Can you slow down? Okay. All right. Trace of Origin, super good. We talked about this before. Trace of Hunting is, like, fucking whatever. You can just sell that. You're not really ever going to use Trace of Hunting except in very specific recipes. You don't give a shit. Okay? I'm running this person from Glitch because it's the closest town. Okay? I'm running this person. He's trying to keep up. He's trying to, like, connect his... He's trying to get his... <laughs> uh, we're going to run a human off of it because humans have the highest luck. And they have the highest sack obtaining chance. Those sacks that you get from your workers are actually just crazy valuable. You can get opal and stuff out of them. You can get fruits and stuff out of them. They're very good. So the sacks are actually really, really high quality. Humans uh, went up in value a decent amount. Um, if we move down here to Southern Swamp, you really don't want the cloud mushroom node. We talked about mushrooms. Uh, they're garbage. Don't bother. Uh, he also has a BDO master's class he teaches in the evening. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that student that's asking me uh mr blue can you slow down i haven't written down every single fucking word on your slide yet learn how to take notes we're going to the next slide thank you so much i don't give a shit uh this node is really good iron ore and rough mud crystal are very valuable will this be on the test it will be on youtube cut up and put into segments into chapters so that you can see every single region and all the different nodes and you can hear it you can skip to where you want and stuff and hear about the different stuff it'll be valuable it'll be good on youtube it'll be good on youtube uh this is a good note you run this out of glitch every time uh you like the humans on this node sure because you like the rough mud crystal it's not bad at all when will this video be up tomorrow probably this is probably the video i will post tomorrow Today I posted the siege from yesterday. I edited that up and got it up. Tomorrow's um, school day, so like I'll do my best. But there you go. There's the YouTube link right there. New videos every day, just like this. Okay, lead. Lead is like mid. Lead is a very mid-level ore. You don't really give a shit too much of a shit about it. It's usually worth around the same as copper. Okay. 
Um, Powder of Time, however, is actually pretty valuable and sits at like low to middle price, uh, reasonable. And it's used in alchemy reagents. So like, I like to take this node, but mm, a, lot of, a lot of people don't like this node. It's too contribution. I would argue that hey, like, girl. if you have hey, the extra- Hey girl. What's up, Taiku? How you doing? If you have the extra contribution, definitely worthwhile. Um, Taiku, for those of you that don't know, Taiku is a streamer. One of our VTubers, Suck Ranger, Super Gamer Suck Ranger. Go give her a follow. Um, all right, so that's Glish. That's mainly everybody out of Glish that I have. Um, oh, Castle Ruins. This node is really good. Mainly because there's not very many ways in this game to get saps. Saps are generally very valuable to Black Desert Online because they're they're really good in alchemy. So whenever you see sap, you should be like, oh, that's worth some money. Right? It's just like the traces. Alchemists need set. Okay, so you definitely want this node. Uh, and you want the human on it. You want the human on it. Uh, mainly because, again, you're, you're here for the sap. The maple timber is also very valuable, though. Remember, timber is worthwhile, too, because all the processors just buy all the timber off the marketplace. Maple is really good. Any sort of timber is really, really solid. All right, we talked about wheat plantation. I do not connect Eastern Border. I go down and through Castle Ruins just to get that node, and I go around to Kama Sylvia Temple. Kama Temple has a flax node that is really good. The Tiger Mushroom node is pretty dog shit, but if you have... This is only if you have 400-plus contribution. This node is really not worth doing unless you have a lot of contribution on it because, again, flax is kind of mid low to mid it sells but like it's not really worth a fucking crazy amount it's like whatever if you have a lot of extra workers all right sure it's really not that bad but okay um anything else in serendia that i have not touched serendia shrine ah yes again monk's branch is an alchemy reagent and it's pretty rare uh you you'd be surprised this stuff typically so honestly it goes up and down let's see where it's at now yeah, so it's, yeah, as I say, it goes up and down. You see this fluctuates a lot compared to other stuff. You know, it's kind of all over the place. This is as of this past month. Sometimes it's up at 3,100. Sometimes it's down at 2,100. It's kind of hit or miss. But if you're just doing it for profit, it's a really good item because you can just kind of watch the market. And when it's really high, you just sell all your fucking monk's branches. Really solid. Mom's branch. Yes, okay, yeah, you could call it mom's branch. That's fine. But again, pine timber. Timber is good. We like timber. We do, we do the timber. We, we do the timber. We're going to run this from Glish. We're going to run this from Glish. We're going to run it to Calpheon because that's where I want all my processing stuff to go. All right. I think that is all the nodes that are of any sort of value on Calpheon. There are a couple other nodes uh, that exist on Calpheon, but like they're all just trash. If you're wondering why I have Brady Fortress, it's, it's because it connects Heidel with Calpheon. Okay. Again, your, your nodes have to be connected in order to get shit done sometimes. Uh, technically, you could pull this out. It's also it's also not a bad node if you uh, if you like doing orc camp. You can connect to orc camp here. Yeah. Like, the orc camp node doesn't have anything particular to take, but you can level up nodes um, and get higher drop rate at that grind zone there. So, like, you can... This is a two birds, one stone situation. I don't ever grind at orcs, so I don't particularly care about the node. Um... But yeah, you can connect to Calpheon and you can get to Orc Camp a little a little easier. That's pretty cheap, right? Um, Oranishi, thanks for that follow, but I appreciate it. I've never done any nodes. That's okay. That's what this guide is for. All right, so that's Serendi in a nutshell right there, boys. We're going to move over to Calpheon because that was the next region uh, technically released. We already talked about Portiferia because that's technically part of Balanos, or it's like close to Balanos. Um, you really only want Randis Island because it gives you seafood on the octopus and it gives you the, the fish from the other nodes. Uh, there's a lot of nodes in Calpheon. This is a lot to unpack, so I'm going to try to keep it simple for you guys. Uh, as far as lodging goes, this is the only other lodging that I actually own in the entire game is Calpheon Southgate 2F, South uh, Calpheon Southgate 2-1. These are very valuable. This is the best. Uh, also, Calpheon Southgate 1. These three right here are the best lodging in Calpheon pound for pound. So if you're looking to invest in lodging right here, this is your this is your shit. Uh, it's the only other place in the game that I actually invested in, like, my contribution in lodging. Um, okay, so I have Beechery Ruins. Birch Timber, Birch Sap. Slam dunk. 
Uh, didn't they change uh, having CP in a node to level it? Or am I bugging? I swear I saw it somewhere. Yeah, you can you can level up uh, your nodes when you have CP invested. Although they're changing it so that you don't have to have contribution invested to get it. To, or when you pull your contribution out, it, stay, it, it keeps its node level, something like that. I'm not really sure exactly what it's going to be yet. Uh, again, we want to run this out of Calpheon. This is a timber, so we really... Gosh, dude, I don't have very many... I don't have very many giants, but ideally we would run with a giant here. But uh, honestly, never mind. I like the human here strictly because it's got sap. It's a sap node, right? We like sap. Birch sap is useful. Typically, saps sell close to max price. This is a W. Uh, this is another excavation node. You need to talk to the node manager here to even unlock the knowledge for this node. Trace of the forest is used. Well, trace of battle is used in certain alchemy um, stuff. But Trace of the Forest is used for... Uh, people will make these functional clothes, like Cook's clothes and stuff like this. And Trace of the Forest is used in great effect to make stuff like that. So there's really always a demand for both Trace of Battle and Trace of Forest. It's a solid node. Uh, and again, we're going to go with a human worker here because we we said we were at least going to try this this time. We said we were going to try this. We're going to go to Duvencroon with this. I'm going to have to redo a bit of my storages so that Duvencroon doesn't get overloaded, but that's okay. Um, okay, Northern Wheat Plantation. Somebody mentioned this before. Um, these nodes are surprisingly inefficient. Well, not surprisingly inefficient. If we go to our territory resource information, um, it's th this one. It's it's on this one. Okay, it's not actually Calpheon. Don't be fooled. This is Calpheon City. That bar means nothing. Okay, so again, th this territory resource bar means how many other players in the game have this node and how efficient that node is going to be pound for pound so if very few other people have those nodes um you're gonna get more value from the node okay uh, a lot of people have northern wheat plantation because it's really easy to get to if you have low cp they're not bad nodes paprika is honestly not bad it counts as a um it counts as a vegetable in black desert for cooking purposes which is really good but you can buy this from a vendor in calpheon for slightly more money uh where do i get paprika you can get it from a vendor you can get it from a vendor. We're gonna run with a we're gonna run with a goblin on there, sure. Barley, this is a very inefficient node. This is pound for pound. The potato nodes are gonna pump out way more. So are the wheat nodes over in Hyler are gonna pump out more than this barley node. For whatever reason, this node kind of just blows. Uh, but like it's not bad if you're a newer player and don't have much contribution. It's a low re it's it's a low effort node. It makes a decent amount of money. It's okay. Um we really don't want to waste our humans on it, though, because, again, it's only got one thing on there. Oh, man. We've only got humans. Okay, we'll use a goblin, sure. This is from Keplin, though. We really don't... Man. Okay, we'll use a giant. Oh, we have a giant. We have a giant. Use the giant. There we go. Sweet. That's what we wanted. Uh, keep in mind, on Quint Hill has some good nodes. Birch, Timber, and uh, Red Tree Lump. I don't like Red Tree Lumps. Their, their price is usually minned out and it's just not super valuable and like it's used in like one or two alchemy recipes but like the demand is just not there for that item birch timber however is very good and typically sells close to max price so like that's a good node uh lead ore and powder of time we talked about this before lead ore is an ore it's mid yeah, that's whatever powder of time is also kind of mid it's a solid node if you have over 400 contribution but don't even bother if you don't have a crazy amount of contribution um I like if you're going to go for birch, get the birch sap with it. This is just pound for pound a better node in every way. I knew, I use uh, Northern Wheat Plantation to level workers. Yeah, that's not a bad idea if you're leveling up your workers. Remember we talked about it's the total amount of run times that they get. Uh, okay, so now we're going to look at the Southern uh, Calf... Oh, okay, there's one more node in Northern Calpheon. You guys saw earlier, this is the node... That everybody loves. This is rough red crystal and tin is the high value. That is a high value. It's not the highest, but it is one of the highest value uh, ores in the game. This is a money node. You f you make some fucking money off this node. This is good shit. Uh, and I want a human running on this uh, just because the the red uh, the rough red crystal is also worthwhile in its own right for di various different things. Okay, tin is worth a shitload. Oh look. Birch Timber. If you have the contribution, grab this node. Definitely worthwhile. Just go ahead and grab it. You don't have to use a human on it. Yeah, and I don't really have a choice. Uh, I guess I'll run the Goblin. I'll just run the Goblin. I don't even care. That's not a super great node. I don't really care about the red 
tree lump. I just want the birch timber out of that note anyway, so who gives a shit? Um, okay. Uh, now we're going to look down towards Southern California. We're going to look at Keplin a little bit here. Keplin, I have Ozzy Pass. This is a fucking incredible. And it's cedar and fir are your two very, very high value. They make the Calpheon timber crate, and traders still make that trade. It's very old tech, but it makes it is really good. Uh, and traders will still use it to level their trading up. And like outdated people use it for that. They also process with it, and they can just make flat out timber crates with it, which are, which are also very valuable. Um, uh, when should I start applying for the Elvia cup upgrades to my gear? Also, which accessory should I start cup upgrading? Rings usually go first, followed by your belt. Well, actually, I'm sorry. Necklace is always first because that's the easy one, right? You just buy that. Um, and then the rings and then the belt usually is last. And then the earrings. Oh, well, the earrings are the last, but... Uh, you should do that after you start getting... When you have your pen boss gear together and you're looking to start get like... And you have your pen kaposhas, put your, put your cups on there. Put your cups on there. All right, so this is cedar timber. We like giants on cedar timber nodes, or so we're gonna run the giant here, because uh, it's a timber node. Ozzy's house doesn't have shit. North abandoned quarry doesn't have shit. Keplin quarry does hit. Coal is good. Don't process it. Coal is good because it's used to make steel. Steel is very valuable in BDO for various different recipes. Do not process it. You are tanking your profit. Processed coal is worth way less because there's really not a a credible use for it in the game that requires a crazy amount of demand. Also, Powder of Rifts, which is Powder of Crevice, they just changed the name, is also really good. Also really good. Coal nodes are very good. I would say they're better than lead nodes, but they're not as good as, like, say, tin. Okay, so they're above lead in terms of overall value. Not as good as tin, though. Um, as far as routing the rest of this, Glutani Cave is worth mentioning. You'd have to... So the problem is, do you see how... These nodes are fucking connected, and some fucking idiot in the Pearl Abyss office said, fuck this, we're not going to connect Keplin to Glutani Cave. Yeah, that kind of fucking sucks, because Glutani's actually a fucking awesome, awesome node. But you have to go up to Keplin Quarry, over to North Abandoned Quarry, Marnie's Lab, and down to Glutani Cave to get coal here. Okay? Emperor Mushroom, we don't care about. And honestly, this is a really high-value coal node. No one gives a shit about it because you have to invest a bunch of extra contribution into it. But you do get more coal out of it. What class are you using? I play uh, Awakening Witch and uh, Awakening Mystic right now. Uh, but I have a Choose Your Class guide on every class in the game. And I have large-scale guides on my hey YouTube for every class in the game. Hey I'm knowledgeable for, just, for most of those classes. You can ask me any of those questions. All right, Kepler Vicinity. There's nothing there. Um, Palette Sensei, what's up, Palette? How you doing, big man? All right, so Keplin Hill. We route down here. This is a good node. If you have over 300 contribution, you're going to want to do this. You're going to want to do this. This has this node route right here that I have coming down all through here. This has some really high value nodes on it. What Dawn Gloves do you choose for or the DR ones? The DR ones for sure. Let me see the name. Let me find the name. So that he doesn't fuck this up, because it's very critical to his... Oh, give me a second. Alright. This one's got 3184. Okay, so you want the blue one. Just get the blue one. It's the blue one. That never happened. Okay. All right, so you want to come down here through Ganon Farm, Kahaku Plain, then you hit Primal Giant Post. This is the first one. Lead Ore and Powder of Rifts, that's a good node. Can't really go wrong with it. I don't disagree with taking it. Um, we apparently still have a Heidel Worker. Fuck it. We're sending it on the... It's 31 minutes on that runtime. Sure. I want you to deliver it to Calpheon, though. Thanks, big man. All right, go ahead. Uh, Hex Stone Wall. Iron Ore. Whenever you see Iron Ore and Powder of Darkness, value town. Uh, what would you recommend for cook for CP? We will get there. We're going to get there. We're going to get... Oh, grilled bird meat. Just keep cooking grilled bird meat. Endlessly. It's 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 solid. Or you can cook pickled vegetables is also okay. Because you can make that endlessly. I don't like vinegar. I don't like um, essence of liquor either. I don't like those two. They feel like crazy inefficient on the utensil. 
I feel like the other ones are better, but like uh, vinegar is cheaper technically. Um, you need vinegar for pickled veggies. Yeah, I just buy the vinegar because I just can't be fucked. It's just wasting my. It just wastes all of my stuff. How about the omelet? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, video has an omelet. I guess that's a new one. I guess that's a new one. I, I know most of the cooking recipes in the game. I do not know about the omelet. What do you process? All kinds of shit. Okay, so hold on. Give me a... Uh, let's go human worker on this. This is good. Deliver to Calfion. Thank you so much. Good shit. Marie Cave, this is why we're out here. This gives us pine sap. Now, this... I will say that this node is actually a lot less valuable now. Back in the day, this is probably... This is one of the only pine sap nodes in the game. They've added more pine sap nodes. First in Dregan. Those were really expensive, though. But the reason that these pine sap nodes are actually so valuable... I'm still going to throw a human worker on here. These are actually less valuable now because of what we talked about in Land of the Morning Light. Remember, these guys give pine sap. Pine sap. Like, these are way easier, less contributions. So, like, honestly, this route is less important now because of that. If you if you really need pine sap, go through that. Now, I will say that Fountain of Origin... This is where we're getting Trace of Origin, boys. This is the high-value Trace of Origin node. Right here. We love Trace of Origin. All right, so hour 15 hour. Honestly, this is a human worker. We're going to run it out of Duvencroon. Fuck it. Actually, we're going to run it out of Calfion because the Duvencroon worker is worthwhile. I'll show why later. You planning on finishing this all tonight? E oh, God, it's 11.52. I'll go through... Oh, shit. All right, we got to speed run. All right, we got to get through this. All right, we got to get through it. We got to get through it. Yeah, I can get through all this tonight. All right, I'm going to stop equipping my workers and I'm just going to start talking about the nudes. Cedar Timber, Spirit's Leaf by Trent. Really good. Trent, um, there's two routes you can go from Trent. If you come down here, the only valuable node is um, this lumbering node right here because it gives you Cedar Sap, which is extremely valuable. You need like seven of it per make in like every single alchemy recipe that requires Cedar Sap. It's obnoxious. It's obnoxious. The rest of these nodes are basically uh, like the Silk Honey Grab. Fuck all that shit. You don't need that. This is again Cedar Timber with Spirit's Leaf. That's great. This is Fur Timber with Bloody Tree Knots. Bloody Tree Knots are hit or miss. Usually they're minned out, but sometimes they're worth a shitload of money. Fur Timber is worth a shitload of money. I recommend taking that node. Um, you move over to Rudum's. Rudum's has tin. We talked about tin. Tin is a slam dunk. Get your tin. Get tin. Tin is good. We love tin. This is Fur Timber, Fur Sap. Again, this is another slam dunk. Fur is worth a lot of money. Fur Sap is worth a lot of money. Can't go fucking wrong there. This is Bear Riverhead. Again, tin. We love tin. There's only three tin nodes in the game. This is them. Take the tin nodes. Okay, Powder of Earth is also really, really good. Powder of Earth is also really good. Tin nodes are probably very, very valuable, even for low contribution people. There's money. 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 Um, This is Mancha Forest. Fur Timber, Fur Sap. And then this is the excavation node again. You have to talk to the node manager to actually unlock this. Trace of Despair and Trace of Violence. Trace of Violence is worthwhile. Trace of Despair is kind of hit or miss. It's like whatever. Trace of Violence is usually really, really tough uh, to get though. So uh, it's definitely worth having it. Is that my girl? What up, Ali C? Oh my goodness. For those of you that don't know, that is Ali C. Go give her a follow right now. Turn that purple to a green. You're welcome. You're welcome. That that woman is so... You'll tune into her like, oh, I'll just watch her for a few minutes. And then you'll blink in three hours if your life disappears. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. What up, Major Tom? How you doing, buddy? Because uh, she's just that entertaining. She's just that entertaining. So Mancha Forest is really good. We're not talking about any of these nodes up here because everything that I don't typically have here is really not very good. Really not. If I don't have it, it's typically not the best. Okay? This is... This is arguably really good. Some people have this node, but like it's kind of a lot of a contribution. You have to go here, here, here to get to Longleaf Sentry. But uh, uh, it's like six contribution for one node. You know what I mean? That's kind of rough. That's kind of rough. All right, let's go down to Kama Sylvia. There are only like two or three nodes in Kama that we give a damn about. Okay. And this is how you route Star's End. I know Star's End is actually closer to Calpheon, but believe it or not, it's better to route it through Grana. Okay, so you ride up through Grana like this, and I'm going to show you why. Firstly, Knock Ore with Powder of Earth. This is a slam dunk. That's a great node. 
The ore, knock ore is typically not worth a crazy amount, but the powder of earth is, and knock ore can be worth max price. It can sell for max price. I don't know what it's at right now. Oh, yeah. No, this is really, yeah, it's at max price right now. Slam dunk. If you want money, it's not very worthwhile if, you, if you're just trying to process and stuff, but it's used for various recipes in the game, so it's really solid. Uh, again, you're going to go up through Whitewood floor, Forest. You're going to grab Tooth Fairy Cabin. This is an excavation node. I don't choose to do this because Trace of the Forest is really not this good. It's it's okay, but like efficiency-wise, in terms of the traces, it's like fucking whatever. It's like kind of mid. I don't like Trace of the Forest. I have already have one Trace of the Forest node. I don't need two, all right? This one is a high value. This is one of the highest value nodes in the game. Uh, I want a Papu on this because I want it running as frequently as possible. Um, we're going to go to storage just completely. Fuck me. All right. Uh, all right. We'll go to Duvencroon then. Okay, there you go. This is Loopy Tree Sap. Loopy Tree um, Saps are like... I mean, Loopy Tree, like, timber sells it like it's, like, okay. It's, like, whatever. It's used in comma recipes uh, for furniture. But Loopy Tree Sap always sells it max no matter what for Spirit Perfume Elixir. It's very, very good. Very, very good. Uh, Hop, I'm doing great today. I'm doing great today. So, normally, I have stars in connected, but I've ripped it out so that I can have a residence right now. Uh, and I have Ash Forest connected because uh, I have to grind it, that godforsaken shithole. Um, Monsham Forest... If you want to do Old Wisdom Tree, Old Wisdom Tree does have a couple nodes uh, that give you reasonable stuff. Moss Tree Sap. Okay, this is against the grain, but Moss Tree Sap kind of sucks. It's only used in the Weenie Looney Elixirs, and no, but that's Knowledge Gain Elixirs. No one gives a shit about those. Don't even, yeah, don't even bother with that. Moss Tree Timber sucks too. Monsham Forest is not bad to invest into if you need the Infinite Potion, though. I don't, you'll notice I don't have any workers running out of Old Wisdom Tree. It's just really not crazy worth it. Um... Oh, Draxia has a fair number um, of workers that you can actually go do. Um, there's an egg node, like, right here. No, that's dried mullet. It's up here somewhere. Hold on, where is it? Is it this one? Chicken meat and egg. I don't I don't like this because you can just get the egg in Velia. I don't fucking care. If you like, this is really just not worth coming all the way out into. I will say that the nickel node that's just north of Odraxia at Olin's Value Heal... This gives you Mithril and Nickel Node. Mithril's kind of a fucking meme, but when you need it, you need it. Nickel is, again, it's like tin. Nickel is like tin. It sells at very, very high prices. Very valuable. But it's difficult. It, it is a lot of contribution to take these nodes. So, like, you only take these if you're over 300 contribution, okay? Um, Powder of Darkness is really good. So, if you're going to take one of the two Nickel Nodes, take the Powder of Darkness. The Mithril's kind of a fucking meme. Um, the... Notably, there is a potato node and a grape node out here. These are worthwhile. They're really low runtime, pretty high yield. Not that bad. Uh, this is a timber node. What is it? Thornwood timber. Thornwood sap is useful because it's used in the evasion elixir. But, like, that's about all it's fucking useful for. Thornwood timber is only useful in making furniture for Odraxia workshop stuff. It's like, whatever. Um... None of this is very good. These are just these are just mushrooms. No one gives Knowledge a shit. Knowledge pots are good for creatures of Medaya book quest. Yeah, that's it though. Yeah, like fuck that. Like you don't even like you just buy the knowledge elixirs. Don't make them. Like who gives a shit? Uh, rough obsidian ore I have because for some reason it's worth a shitload of money and I can't really figure out why. Like I, I'm not really sure why obsidian ore goes for as much as it does, but like. Yeah, I have, like, I have no idea why it's worth this much money, but that node is fucking stupid. That node is really high value. You get a crazy amount of value out of Obsidian. Obsidian ore is up on... Okay, so it's, like, right... Boom, boom, boom. Is it here? Nope. Is it there? Nope. Is it here? Yeah. Shere Khan Iron Mine. Okay. Rough Obsidian ore. Not worth anything now. Nope, definitely super worthwhile. I just checked it. Super fucking worthwhile. It's also got Trace of Ascension here. Quartz is whatever. It's just a throwaway fucking sell uh, kind of item. But Trace's Ascension is also really good, so I recommend taking that. Um, this is just Bracken. We talked about Bracken. Bracken's kind of mid, and it's declining in overall value. Okay. It's used for bartering. Yeah, okay. All right, so, well, I mean, that can't be possibly it. Like, no one uses Obsidian Ore to bar barter T1 barter maps. That's stupid. That's, like, the most expensive T1 barter ever. 
And that's coming from a barterer that's like Master 15 with full blue gear and two Carex. That's stupid. That's dumb. Don't do that. Okay, Birch Timber, Monk's Branch. You guys are getting the hang of this now. Birch Timber is really good. All Timbers are very good with the exception of the ones that I noted before. Uh, Monk's Branch is also very good. Slam Dunk, you just need to wait and sell it at the right time. I have this note because Rough Jade is kind of a fucking meme. But like I'm kind of banking on that being worth a shitload someday. Um, so like don't take this unless you have a shitload of contribution. None of these, none of these notes through this entire stretch here, unless you're over 400 contribution, none of this. You don't give a shit about any of this. In most of these workers I have running through Odraxia because they keep giving us free Odraxia workers. Okay. This is the high value node that I like down here. Snowfield Cedar Sap is a really solid node. It's used in the Destruction Elixir, which all late game PvPers like to use. Um, also, the timber is worthwhile. We talked about that. This is that node. Remember I said there's another honey node that's really good. If you're going to take one node uh, outside of Ailton with that free worker outside of Ailton, I would honestly take Windmill's Perch. Fuck the fucking honey node. But like, Windmill's Perch is really good because again, this is, this is the easy Snowfield Cedar Snap to get. Most people have this node because it's really good and you need it for destruction elixir. It doesn't actually yield a crazy amount of sap, but fuck it. If you only need it for yourself, you know, it's probably worthwhile. I have both of them because I have a lot of contribution, but okay. This is the cooking honey node right here. If you have two workers in Ailton, this is your guy. This is your second node right here. It's not bad at all. It's just a little bit of a reach. It's less contribution than the Heidel node. And typically, honestly, it used to be really high value. It's still very high value. So you're getting more honey per run from this node than you are from the Heidel node if you're going to pick one of the two. Okay, just so you're aware. Did you talk about worker lodging, storage, and all those things yet? We did talk about worker lodging briefly. Uh, in order to get workers... Um, in order to get workers in any given town, guys, you have to either buy lodging or you can buy this... Okay, so there's lodging on the pearl shop that you can buy that I didn't talk about, but this shit is super fucking good. Um, yeah, it's down here. It's like, this is the storage stable. Okay, here you go. You can buy workers, and then this permanently expands the amount of workers that you can have in each city for pretty cheap amounts of pearls. If you're okay spending a few nickels and dimes on the game, this is definitely worth your weight in gold here if you're setting up a worker empire, because then you don't have to invest contribution into the city. In order to get the workers, which we went through before. I only have two of those. Heidel. And Calpheon. Those are the only two ones. Uh, there's the only two worker lodgings that I actually have owned. The rest of them were Pearl Shop. Um, or the free workers that I get in that town anyway. Now, I will say that every once in a while, they hand away a free worker on loyalties. You should always make it. If they hand you a free worker in your loyalties, you need to buy it. It is super. Because you, like, right here. Calpheon, Altanova, Valencia, Velia. You see all these extra worker lodging? Yeah, these are super fucking good. You need to get those. Is the estimate that shown actually right? I'm not sure what you mean by estimate. Uh, make sure you guys sell all your destruction elixirs when you make them and don't need it, thanks. <laughs> Alright, fair enough. Well, I, at least I'm showing people how to do this. Tashira Ruins is really only used for Bracken. Okay, Bracken is kind of mid now. No one gives a shit about this fucking node. Okay, this is really not a very good node. If you're going to invest into something out of Duvencrone, this is a better node. This gives you Birch Timber, Birch Plank, Birch Sap. It's a shitload of contribution, though. I This this node is, is three contribution. It used to be five. It's a lot of contribution, but if you can get up here, that's a crazy good node. This is Pine Timber, Pine Plank, Pine Sap. Again, very high value nodes, mainly because uh, nobody fucking has those nodes. And so the, the amount of timber and sap that I get out of those nodes is way higher than everyone else's. So like, yes, it's a lot of contribution, but I'm actually pulling a crazy amount of value out of Kuwait Lumber Camp just because no one else has the fucking node. It's tough. Um, do you have a bunch of your CP invested in farms? No. I have no CP in farms. I do a full worker empire. I work 111 workers around the clock. And that, believe it or not, is way better money, typically, than the farms are actually going to net you. Farms require active playtime to do at least an hour a day, usually, of active fucking playtime to upkeep. You don't even, it sneaks up on you. If you have 10 farms with 10 slots in each fucking farm, it's like 25 minutes a run at least. And you're going to have to do it at least twice a day. Boom, that's close to an hour a day of active playtime. And you got to upkeep the workers and shit. Ah, fuck all that shit. Just let the workers run on the nodes and get the sacks. The sacks are way fucking better. 
The sacks are way fucking better. That's wrong. Yeah, no, that's that's okay. You can have a wrong opinion. It's outdated information. I don't care. All right, moving on. Um, Wavs, what up, man? How you doing? So we did Kama. We did Odraxia. We did Ailton. Um, like, I mean, if you like farms, they're definitely worth doing. If you like cooking, farming is definitely the way to go. But, like, for someone like me that doesn't like to do fucking chores and just wants to run, like, AFK worker, like, most people do farms because it's good AFK money. And, like, they only have to spend a little bit of time on it. I, I'm, I'm telling you that if that's the reason you're doing your farms, it's not worth it. Just fucking, just, just fucking do nodes, dude. Just, just do your worker empire. Like, fuck that. If you like farming because you enjoy farming or because you like the, like the horse math that you get from farming or that you like the, the, the shit that you can get, like the onions and shit for your cooking and stuff, that's okay. That's okay. But like other than that, just put the fucking shit into nodes, man. The, the farms are going to feel like a chore. Most players, that the, fuck, they'll end up quitting the game because, ah, oh, fuck, bro, my, my farms, ah, oh, shit. You know, like, um, it just feels like a chore after a while. Okay, Medaya sucks. I'm just going to say this. Medaya fucking blows, guys. Harry Two Balls, thanks for the follow, buddy. Also, nice name, Keck W. Um, most of the Medaya nodes are way overpriced. Way over. I like farming. Then, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, the free farms. Yeah, there are free farms that you can do. I have both of them. Uh, they're actually sitting in my, my Velia storage. Uh, they're right here. Um, you should have those down and doing those. That That is good. Yeah, absolutely. But investing the contributions, generally just not worthwhile. Yeah, unless you like doing it and and you want to do it for cooking then it's worthwhile it makes money it makes a little bit more money than your nodes but you have to do way more work for it so i just don't i don't consider it very much value error in game thanks for that prime sub but i really appreciate that nothing makes me wetter than a brand new prime sub all right very quickly there's only a few nodes in altanova worth their spit uh abandoned iron mine is honestly not one of them for the most part except for zinc this node again zinc and tin same level zinc tin nickel we're thinking the same thing. They're they're very valuable. Highest tier. High, well, second highest tier. In terms of ore, it's very good, but it's a lot of contribution to get down here. Iron ore, powder of darkness, rough black crystal. Rough black crystal is, is good, but it's not nearly as good as it used to be when people were making Grunel around the clock in 2018. Okay, so rough black crystal is like, I have fucking whatever now. It's the powder of darkness and the iron ore that you're here for. And to be honest with you, it's really not worth doing uh, unless you unless you actually just want to come out and take these notes. None of these are worthwhile unless you want, uh, unless you have a bunch of extra contributions. So I wouldn't even, except for this one. Um, cinnamon. Cinnamon. This sells at max price all the time, every time, because everyone is doing their tier 10 weeklies. Uh, and carrot confit requires cinnamon. It's one of the only recipes in the game that it requires. And it's extremely high yield because it's really close to tariff, so the runtime on it is like 15 minutes. 30 fucking cinnamon every 15 minutes. You're you're banking money on this node. This is arguably one of the highest silver nodes in the game, uh, depending on what worker you have on it. Cotton is kind of mid. It's right around where flax. It's a little bit better than flax, I would say. Cotton's definitely just a little bit better than flax. So just keep that in mind. I like taking the cotton nodes because they're, they're actually pretty good value for CP just outside of tariff right there. Not bad at all. Um... There is an aloe node here. Do not ever take this. I have experimented with this node, uh, and I have regretted it. It is terrible. Don't even fucking bother. It's dog shit. Cot this is another cotton node here. This is fine. Um, how am I supposed to get fruits without farms? You can gather with a hoe um, on stuff. And by the way, you can get fruits from your workers from the sacks, big dog. You can get you can get fruits from your from from your sacks. Whoops, sack. Um, is it some farmer's sack? Yeah, right here. I have 391. These give you fruits. There you go, big dog. No, he's saying fruits of nature, not fruit vendor. No, 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 no. If he means fruit for cooking, yeah, you can buy that from a vendor. But these are like the fruit of nature. Uh, fruit of the sun, fruit of crimson flame, stuff like this. This is what you get out of the farmer's sack. And I get, I get arguably as many fruits. Of, well, you get more fruits than I, fruits than I will, but I don't give a shit because I don't have to work for it. I don't care. Low effort money. That's what we're all about here in this fucking channel. Hell yeah, baby. That's what we fucking care about. Fuck the farming. That that requires effort. Um, uh, this this node is ah fuck it. This node sucks. The only reason you have this is for the ruby. To be honest with you, it takes a lot of contribution to get out of here. Also, the zinc is really good. The platinum is really good too. But again, it's going to take a lot of contribution to take these nodes. So this should be kind of the last region that you're kind of investing into of the regions so far. I would say. 
priority level if you have little contribution it's the new region first followed by probably balanos then serenia then calpheon take your common notes sure uh and then probably medaya next oh draxia is like whatever yeah okay sure Ailton is kind of whatever okay sure get your free workers working but like aside from that um, you don't really need it. There's some other nodes that I don't have in Medaya that we're going to talk about. Ancient Fisher is a zinc node. This is one of the more valuable zinc nodes because the runtime on this node is actually pretty reasonably low. Um, it's it's a pretty solid it's a pretty solid node. Um, all right, if you come up here to Stone Tail Wasteland, this is the only Acacia node in the entire game. It's also the only way to get Acacia Sap. So if you're super into bartering. Uh, this is the only way to get your Acacia Sap unless you want to go manually gather it yourself. And I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to have to go manually gather it or snipe it off the marketplace. I recommend just sniping it off the marketplace. Getting a, Let's see. To get 2,000 Acacia Sap from this node is probably going to take you around six to eight months. Just to, just to wrap your head around that. Okay, It's not a very good node. That's why I don't have it. But it is the only Acacia Timber. It's going to sell at max price. It's, it's, it's a solid node. You just have to invest a stupid ass amount. Of, you have to connect through either Tariff or Alta Nova. It's just not worth coming up here, dude. Fuck this. You know? Um, none of these other nodes are worth a shit. Uh, Elric Shrine does have the White Cedar Timber. This is the same shit. White Cedar t Sap is the, exa this is the exact same situation as Acacia. It's used for bartering and shit. It's really not worth coming up here. Just snipe it off the fucking market or go gather it yourself and just rip the Band-Aid off. Have you placed a worker on the Rabbit Punch node? Yes. 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 Right there. Right there. All right. Uh, up here, this is this is Medaya Northern Highlands. A lot of people like this node. I don't like it because I have to reach all the way up here for it. This is white cedar timber. This is maple timber, maple sap, old tree bark. Slam fucking dunks. That that node is mm, mm, super good. Super good. This white cedar timber, white cedar sap, old tree bark is okay. It's not as great on the yield as the maple timber is for some reason. I've had both these nodes for extended periods of time. The maple one is better if you're going to pick one of the two. But really, you're not taking these unless you really want, fucking want those things. Um. Uh. Okay, so yeah, that's that's everything in Medaya that's actually worth a shit. Um. Oh yeah, this is ex excavation site. I forgot. Ancient ruin excavation site. This is Trace of Earth, Trace of Chaos. Trace of Earth is one of the most valuable traces in the game. You absolutely should have this node. This is really fucking good. Uh, and it's worth the contribution investment. Okay. For mid contribution, two, over 250 contribution, grab this shit. Grab this shit. Medaya Shore? No. No. This is rough opal, but the fucking, the literal dog shit value on this node, in order to reach up here and grab this, it's at a 30% efficiency rate. If it's at about 100% efficiency rate, I'll grab it every once in a while. But like, yeah, that Opal node is not nearly as good as the one we're going to talk about next. So I don't really like that Opal node. But if you're really desperate for Opal for your T10 attempts or whatnot, uh, that, okay, that's an option. But like, honestly, let's go look at fucking Valencia. Kaposha, this is it. This is it. This is way less contribution. It's way higher value. This is where you're getting your Opal. It's one of the highest value fucking nodes in the entire game because Opal sells at max price every single fucking time at every single fucking level of processing. So like rough Opal is super good. Copper is like kind of mid. We talked about that before. Uh, and then Powder of Flame is like fucking whatever. We don't care. It's at min price. The other good one over here is Nutmeg. Nutmeg is uh, extremely valuable for cooking. So people asked about cooking nodes before. Valencia has most of your cooking nodes. We're going to talk about this. Nutmeg is really good for the Valencia meal, which a lot of players still, you could say, incorrectly use for their um, for their Imperial turn-ins. I still do the Valencia meal because I, I'm, I don't care. I like to level up my uh, my gathering and my hunting. Where uh, do I go for C A P H R A manual gathering smile? Kafra manual gathering. Uh, you can gather anywhere that you want, really. I like gathering meat, though. But like, you should chop wood. If you're gonna, if you're gonna go for Kafras particularly, uh, the Garmoth Pit. You go chop those trees around Garmoth Pit. Get dead tree essence, uh, and make make the dead tree essence into spirit perfume elixir. That's the highest Kafras drop rate in the game for any sort of gathering. The silver per hour on that is close to like probably 700 mil. Um, if you if you're turning it all the way into the spirit perfume and you have the sap and everything available the problem is you're bottlenecked really fucking hard on fruit of nature and really fucking hard on uh, loopy tree sap so you can't do it very long 
um just heads up like that 700 mil drops to like two like 300 mil very quickly um new region is best for dead tree essence shut your fucking mouth yeah there actually is a dead tree essence uh gathering rotation uh right in here you can look it up all the different points uh on the map but a lot of these trees are will give you dead tree essence as well for spirit perfume elixir and that is really good yeah um okay again i know a lot about a lot of things i don't claim to know about everything but life skilling i'm good at fucking life skilling even though most of my content is pvp i promise i'm good at life skilling okay so we're talking about um sand grain bazaar uh this this node nutmeg is really good tef is dog shit don't even bother just buy your tef unless you're like unless you're like okay i have the contribution fuck it i have the extra worker fuck it the, sure fine yeah then you can grab the tef node but really this is not a very valuable node this is not a very valuable. I have it because I have an extra worker at Sandgrain, but like, it's whatever. It's whatever. Um, there is a valuable node that I do not have called uh yeah Kunin's Vacation Spot. This requires a fuckload of contribution. I usually come down from Shikatu to grab this because you can grab this is purified water, purified water and bag of muddy water. Bag of muddy water can be turned into purified water by processing it, by like filtering it with your like processing menu um purified water is extremely important for like a hundred different things in the game from curing your desert disease to alchemy reagents and various things of that nature um it's a very good node with relatively solid value for sure it's definitely one of the better value it's just a lot of contribution and i just don't have the contribution for it right now the other one is um there's another node that will give it i think it's lakea falls Yep, there it is. Uh, there's only two purified water nodes in the game that I am aware of, and both of them require a shitload of contribution. Lakea Falls is generally speaking, that's not worth it. This one is not worth it. If you're going to get one, get Kunin's Vacation Spot and connect it down through Shikatu and use one of your Shikatu workers on it, okay? Or you can use one of your Altanova workers. If if you don't like the Medaya nodes, you can connect up through here, but as a warning, it's going to be like nine contribution for one node. I really don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> Fig is always super valuable. Uh, if we're rotating up towards Shikatu now, Fig is crazy good. You can either sell this. This is, again, used in the Valencia meal pretty exclusively. Uh, Washi Lee, thanks for the follow. Uh, fig is like, if you're looking for profit, 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 Fig, Fig, Fig. You can sell Fig. It's really high value. They're constantly pumping out like 40 Fig every time they go and they go get Fig. And they're doing it like on a 15-minute fucking rotation. It's crazy. It's crazy. Or it's a 30-minute rotation. Like, this shit is, like, super juiced in terms of money. Okay? Plus, you get sacks from those nodes. Yeah. So, these these nodes are some of the best in the game here. Uh, you definitely want those. And you get a free worker in Shikatu anyway. So, I recommend just throwing them on a fig node. Um, this uh, this Star Anise node is worth mentioning. It's dog shit. Um, but, like, when you need Star Anise and there's none on the market, that kind of fucking sucks. But, like, there should always be Star Anise available on the market. You shouldn't have to worry about it. If you're trying to get Star Anise tea and you don't have them, you can buy them from a vendor, the general goods vendor in Sandgrain Bazaar or Valencia City will sell you uh, as much Star Anise tea as you want, but it's you're going to pay a premium. Um, Okay. Coming out northeast of Shikatu, you have more cooking nodes. Frika is really good, although for some reason on the marketplace, people have a ton of Frika. So, like... It's not as good as Fig is, but you need it for the Valencia meal, so I recommend taking it if you're gonna, if you need Frika. I actually take, there's a Frika node closer to Valencia as we get over there, I'll, I will talk about. Um, Iris Canyon, this is why I have these connected. Elder Tree Sap actually kind of fucking blows. I mean, Elder Tree Sap is good, but Elder Tree Timber actually just, man, this is just not it. I tried this node, I don't recommend this unless you have a fuckload of contribution, and to be honest with you, you should not connect any of this unless you have over 400 contribution. None of this really matters all that much. This is a lot of contribution for very little outside game. I don't re recommend doing it for newer players. This is not a new player-friendly zone. Sandgrain Bazaar and Shikatu, that's your fucking shit. That's your fucking shit. Okay, yeah, so it's worth mentioning. Nutmeg, again, that's really high value. If you're selling it or using it, that's a really good note. It's just like Fig. It's just like Fig. It's very, very solid. Okay, so now we're going to come down to the Vanadium and the Titanium. Remember I said there's like tiers of ore that we talked about before? So there's like the bottom tier, which is like um, copper, like lead, right? This, they sell for a... Sell, all ore sells for a decent amount. Uh, but like those are like the, the lowest... Uh, above that, you have like tin is really fucking good. Sells at max most of the time. Nickel. Um, and then you have, I'm forgetting one of them, zinc. 
are all in this tier. And then in the top tier is like titanium and vanadium. These will sell for the most in terms of overall value and are very fucking good. Are very fucking good. However, it's it's going to cost you bongo bucks contribution. What's up, Christian? Good to see you back, buddy. Uh, Darapa, Corey the Cop, uh, Bloody Boxer uh, 62, and Tank My Daddy. Hey, girl. Hey. Thanks for those follows, guys. Um, we are going through what nodes to take. So if you are, if you have all this shit, the Vanadium node is actually the most valuable node out here. You want this node first before the Nutmeg, before the Elder Tree, before the, uh, before the, um, the Freaka. This is the best node out here. Um... That doesn't have anything. Amkado Inner Harbor is an interesting note, so I will talk about it very briefly. You can you can hire workers in um in Ancado. However, they can't work unless you have contribution invested into Ancado. Watch, I can pull contribution out. And now I can't use this fucking worker anymore. And now I can't use this guy anymore. He's on yeah. See? See? So like you can get a worker here, but you have to actually invest contributions. So I do have uh, Ancado taken here. I just have him working. Typically, uh, we're going to rotate over towards Valencia City here. This shit is juiced. Valencia has some excellent Mithril too. Yeah, fuck Mithril. Yeah, that shit's a meme. Um, just put orders down and pray. Okay, Valencia City has some amazing nodes. Silk. Silk is money. It's one of the underrated uh, nodes in the game. Okay, it's also used. I forget what they added it to recently. But like, okay, so yeah, not more people have taken this node now, but it's still good. This is still a good node. This is still a good node. Honestly, you see how the price fluctuates and sometimes it hits like max. That's when you want to sell. Don't sell it when it's down here. It goes through like fluctuations. So don't sell right now, but you wait and it'll spike again. It'll come all the way the fuck back up because it goes back and forth. Depending on demand within the game, and you can I just sell it when the when the price gets really high. Okay. So that's actually a really good node. You just have to sell at the correct time. Um date palm. Here it is, baby. Some of the highest value nodes in the entire game right here. This is good shit. This is just like the fig. You're just cash money. Cash money. If you are a, a cook or if you're just looking for value, uh you put your you put your Valencia workers on the date palm nodes. That one there. Uh, there's another date palm node here as well. And then this is the freaking node that everybody seems to take. Okay, so like these, this is the freaking node that you take. Remember that freaking node that's out in the middle of fucking nowhere? Uh, it's up here at Bamboo Valley. Yeah, that, yeah, fuck that node. You can just take this one. Date palm wine for days. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so yeah, those, those nodes around Valencia are really good. Also just east of Valencia. Um, you have Arihaza Palm Forest. Both of these nodes are really good. I just didn't have the contribution for both of them right away. And I wanted to experiment with a couple other nodes, which I will get into in a moment. But like both of these are definitely worth taking as a new player. I recommend putting the worker from, um, Arihaza, at least on the Arihaza Palm Forest node and putting them on the Palm Timber just because coconuts are really good. And Palm Timber is kind of like low to mid, as I've said a few times, but like it's still, it'll sell. It's fine. It's, it's like whatever. It's really only used for crates, but who gives a shit? Coconuts sell at max because they're used for boat stuff. Uh, you upgrade your boat with a bunch of fucking coconuts. So, like, coconuts always seem to have a certain amount of value. Um, you come up through here. Um, I count in brutal with a brand new sub, and it's not even a prime sub. It's a real sub. Thank you so much, man. Nothing makes me better than a brand new sub. I really appreciate that. Uh, do not take cactus nodes. This is like aloe. This is just like taking a hundred dollar bill and just flushing it down uh, the toilet or into your garbage disposal in your sink. Um, it's just not worth doing. It's fun to look at, but really, no. It's terrible. If you're going to come up here, you're grabbing the titanium node, which is crazy good. Okay. This titanium node is actually... This deleted, is the reason. So I just re for Holy shit. Yo, deleted, sir. Holy shit. Deleted solo, sir. Just re for and Elul BDL. Thanks so much, guys, for those brand new subs. All right, I have the resub for five months and the resub for three months. Thanks so much, guys. Welcome back. Thanks for continuing to support me. Holy shit, Sasha, you're huge. And I don't just mean your stream. I, I don't just mean your stream. Thanks so much, Sasha, for that big raid. I really appreciate it. For those of you that love the entertaining shot calling that I love to do, I uh, love the high energy stuff that I, you're going to love, Sasha. Go click on that purple heart above there. Make it a green heart. 
Make it a green heart. Thanks so much, Sasha. We're we're finishing up our node worker empire guide right now. Guys, if you don't, if you're starting out, you don't have a crazy amount of contribution, you double up on the palm timber nodes. Okay. But if you have a just subscribe. If you have about five or ten contribution to spare, take it out of the, the, the palm timber node and you have, you have three extra contribution, maybe. Bring it up to the bring it up to the volcano zone. Grab this titanium node is really fucking good. If you're wondering which is better, titanium or vanadium, it's titanium because the, the rough uh, violet crystal is worth more than the rough blue crystal. Both of them are worthwhile, but the violet crystal is better. Good shit, bro. Have a good stream. Thanks so much, man. Later taters. Yeah, I gotta work in the morning too. I gotta I, we're speed running the rest of the, the guide here. Um Greater Crater is also good because there's another titanium node out of here. It's just gonna rip your balls off in terms of overall contribution to get up here, so I don't do it. Um if you have an extra worker and you really like titanium more, it is a really high value node, and no one else in the fucking game really has it. Let's check. Um let's check. Yeah, nobody else in the fucking game has that fucking node, uh, because it's just really hard to get to and it's really just not worthwhile. Um, oh my God, it's the best Valk in North America. Is Raiden in here? I don't, I didn't, I didn't see Raiden. <laughs> um, uh, Talcarin, thanks for that brand or, or that, that resub for three months. Enjoy the new sub badge, buddy. Thanks so much for coming back. Thanks for continuing to support me, man. You really took about your website for your guide. What is this? Okay, yeah, this is a good website for the guide. I'm actually going to put this in the, the guide description here. Uh, this helps you do... Uh, this, honestly, helps you figure out what nodes are connected to what. This this is really good. This just like, this is basically a restructure restructuring of Fami Map, or Fami Map Tools or whatever the fuck, that site that just went down. Somethinglovely.net. This is really good. It helps new players understand how nodes are connected and stuff, okay? Click plant zones at the top. It shows your nodes. Okay, good. That's good. Uh, okay. There we go. All right. Thanks for the follows, guys. Hey, girl. Hey, thanks for those follows. I really appreciate that, guys. All that support. Uh, no, 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 no. This is too far. If you've come this far, you've gone too far. Go fucking back. Yes, this looks... This node is a bait. Rough opal, powder of darkness, vanadium ore, but blue... It sounds amazing. It's like 15 contribution to reach this fucking node. It is not. I don't care how much you value those three things. It is not worth grabbing that node. It doesn't really matter. Until we have like 600 contribution in the game, that node is not going to be worthwhile. Vanadium crates will then just get the vanadium ores that we talked about uh, elsewhere. Uh, the rest of these Valencia nodes down here are all pretty much just dog shit or don't have anything. There is one to note over here at... Uh, Tinian Valley and Crescent Shrine. Pistachio, fuck no. Uh, this is Palm Timber, Palm Sap, Palm Plank. Looks good. Don't do it. Dog shit. This is Tef. Don't do it. Dog shit. Um, where's my Crescent? Crescent Mountains. Um, Iron Ore, Powder of Darkness, Rough Black Crystal. That's a good note. But it's a lot of... Con it's seven contribution extra to get out here. So just as a warning, it kind of sucks to get out here. But if you have the extra contribution to spare and you really want the powder of darkness, sure, rough black crystal. Don't come out here for rough black crystal. Just buy rough black crystal off the marketplace. It doesn't sell very well. Iron ore is like okay too. Iron ore is okay too. And both of these nodes are the same thing. Both of those nodes are the same thing. Okay. Uh, here's Crescent Shrine itself. This is what I was talking about. This is exactly seven contribution to reach. And I know that because I had it for a very long time. Titanium ore from this. Very, very good. Can't go wrong. Very good. Seven contribution to reach it, though. If you want titanium or vanadium, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. Um, all right. There's Aukman has some shit at it. Uh, it's just fig, though. I don't recommend coming all the way out to Aukman to get this, though, as it's five contribution to grab it, I think. By itself, like the note, it's the note itself requires five contribution um, to actually grab. They changed it to two. Okay, well then, even still, not worth it. Not worth it. The fig nodes outside of Shikatu will shoot uh, suit your fancy anyway. You're fine. Okay. All right. So that's Valencia. We went over Margoria. We've done Odalita. We've done Mountain of Eternal Winter, Kama, Ka Calfion, Serendia. Uh, the new region we did first. We did uh, Land of the Morning Light. We did Margoria. We did all this stuff. We've done it all. Um, what if you grind Aukman? 
Uh, Achman and History and those don't actually translate to their... Actually, I think that they changed that, didn't they? Now it does translate, doesn't it? I think it does work now, doesn't it? Obedience actually works for Verhistria now. I think. I think they changed it. Yeah. They, this It used to not have a node associated with it, even though it was called the Achman node. Uh, but yeah, Pilgrim Sacred, right there at the bottom. Pilgrim Sanctum's Obedience now helps your loot for History of Ruins. So that helps tremendously. Uh, Achman should be the same for Achman. I don't know where the... Where is my boy? Where is my boy, the Achman? No, there it is. Well, no, it doesn't say that. I'm not sure. It doesn't say that for Achman. I don't know for Achman, to be honest. It would say it on the tip there. It would say that on the tip there. Achman is somewhere in Arihazi. Okay, yeah, so like it's not the Achman node then, maybe? On Kato Coast? Oh, wait, that's over here. Oh, yep. It's it's Ancado Coast. It really is. It's so Ancado Coast works for Achman. If you're grinding at Achman, you should invest in Ancado Coast. If you're grinding history, it's Obe it's Pilgrim Sanctum Obedience. Yeah, no, that's good. No, it's good that we cover that. Any questions? Anybody have questions? This is this is the this is the closing comments on the guide. On remember, guys, this guide will be on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, please remember to like and subscribe.